Yeah, so mm. Hotline Miami. What? Well, just just to go off what you were saying earlier, it actually plays like it was probably built around PC controls. It seems like it's the way it controls with a with a a controller, not with the mouse and keyboard. Is it does you you feel like you probably have a little bit more agency over the control scheme if you were playing it on the mouse. Also, you control it with an analog stick, so it, it there's a lock on function, but it's it. Anyway, that's not really getting to what the game is about. So uh, oh, no, no, it's yeah. it's an important it's, point. It's it, 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 you can play it on a console. I would imagine that it's probably better on PC. It feels like it probably is, even though just console version, I would still easily rate it a nine out of ten anyway because it's brilliant. Yeah, there's a new one coming out as well soon, isn't there? There is. I'll be getting that straight away. I think an interesting thing about uh, about Hotline Miami as well is it was created in a game maker studio, so it was created in basically a WYSIWYG game making tool, uh, which which is very interesting that such a a game such as that has become so popular and struck out so well in something that a lot of developers, uh, even indie developers, would look down on. I'll be honest with you, I see quite a lot of people using Game Maker. Game Maker is a is an engine like Unity for anybody who isn't aware of it. Um, it's quite cheap to buy. I think you can get a free version of it, and you can basically just put a game together. Um, there's all, there's a lot more advanced features in it as well, but and there's scripting and all kinds of cool stuff. But yeah, it is impressive that you can get games that are that have I don't know transcended like a, a genre boundary. I think with mm. even with a, an engine that you're just dragging and dropping mainly. Mm. But I said I think you can do more advanced stuff with it. It's got a lot. I think. There's an element of luck with a lot of these indie games, or so it would seem from watching things like Indie Game the Movie and just stuff. I mean, you probably know much more about this than I do, both of you. But that game in particular, it had it, the time at which it came out was very fortuitous for it. Um, it I mean, have either of you seen the film Drive? I the, no. the game, the game riffs heavily on that. Um, the main character has that white jacket and thing that the Ryan Gosling character wears in Drive. It's very clearly meant to be set in a similar world to that. Even the title screen's got a similar pink sort of neon sort of lighting and it has a lot of that dry feel to it with the sort of very synthy soundtrack. So it was at a time when that was just enough in people's consciousness that it, it caught on. Like when I heard about the game, I thought that just sounds interesting and then picked it up. And oh, It'd be interesting to got, know if they, they made that decision consciously or, or it was just the, the fortuitous, as you said. The character's jacket really seems obviously designed to be like the one in Drive, yeah. um, the one that the character wears. Um, I mean, I won't go into Drive too much, but it's just it's it's like a, a crime thriller about a guy who is a stunt driver who does um, some driving. So there's not like he doesn't run into houses and shoot people and throw baseball bats at them, but it's no. got that <laughs> aesthetic and the style of it and all that. There kind aren't of stuff. many people that do that, Sam. Uh, no. Or many people in films, or even you know in. Well, maybe comics. It's more like a comic thing, isn't uh, it? <laughs> some Robert Rodriguez films definitely have guys doing that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I've just, I've just brought back the uh, the crotch gun in... Um, <laughs> yeah. um, Desperado. No, the other one. Um, Dawn, no, that's, Dawn, uh, Dawn Till Dusk. Yeah, from, from Dusk Till Dawn. Dusk yeah. Till Dawn. So. Explain that. For, for anybody who lis <laughs> is listens and maybe, you know, if you... If we do keep doing this, uh, I do tend to come out with a lot of words backwards and phrases. Uh, it's just me, and these guys put me right. But at least these two have got the brain in the right order. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, in terms of Hotline Miami, I've heard a lot of people, it, Lou included, actually, say that they couldn't stomach the game, and it was it gave them it made them dizzy. I'm sure you said that you. No, you that was, like wasn't that. me. Wasn't oh, me, I'm, no. I'm sure you said that. Sorry, obviously that's not right. Maybe it was Fez that you said that about then. Uh, no, I, the only game that they ever done that to me was Wipeout on the PlayStation back in <laughs> yeah. 1995. Uh, yeah. The first time I went over the, the big bridge in the demo, yeah. um, and I, I was playing from a first-person perspective, and suddenly kind of the screen's tilting and my brain's tilting the other way, and, and it felt really weird. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I don't really get motion sickness from games now. No, I, thought, I'm, I know a few people have said that they can't handle the way that the camera works and the fact that it's quite close, mm. and and you and you know you're moving the camera around with your mouse at the same time as moving the character on the PC specifically. I think it's probably similar with two the two thumbsticks on the console. You do, you it? kind of do do that, yeah. Uh, I I can't imagine it being very easy to play on a console pad. I'll be honest with you. It took a bit of getting used to. Yeah. Um, does it play like a twin stick shooter, so do you have like one stick for aim and one stick for move? Yes, basically. So one stick moves you um, 
yeah, you sort of up, down, up, uh, forwards, backwards, you know, strafing left and right, and your right stick turns you in the direction that you want to look. Right. Uh, and that also affects your your aiming cursor as well. But there is a lock on button, so if you, so as you, you know, as you go through the game, you get these the walls and the rooms, and you can lock onto an enemy and then walk in the door and get the straight on them. All oh, right. Uh, I don't think that's that's in the I PC think they version. might have put that in because it would. It would probably be borderline unplayable without it because you need that lock on. I mean, there are certain situations where you have to run and get the lock on as you move in, which is challenging in its own way. But I played through yeah. the entire game and I, I don't know how many times I died in it. it, it I've just played it now for a very brief second because there's one level that I haven't done yet and I wanted to remind myself of, uh, of kind of how it feels. And mm. I, I, I died like six times within about 20 seconds, including loading times. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, it's so fast that it's just like, bad depth, yeah, jack, yeah. reload, bad drop, depth, there, there. It's just constant. Yeah, yeah, it's totally. very. It's, I think it's very interesting now because it brings up a good point um, in that you've got this rapid cycle for games. If you look at some of the, the recent casual hits like um, Flappy Bird, Hmm. They work on the same principle in that you die, you respawn, you die, you respawn. And it's fast enough so that you feel like you're always making progress. Mm. Mm. Um, you can it's do that really with, interesting mechanic. with the simpler games, though. Like, the, I mean, I don't consider um, Hotline Miami too complex a game. It's a really great idea, really great simple mechanic. Well executed. Yeah, well executed. And that's why it doesn't take long to load. I mean, technically, I imagine it's because it, there's not much there to load and it's all already buffered, but I mean, games like I don't know, if you look at Unreal Quake, anything like that, there's a whole level to load there's lots of 3D geometry and things like that, so if you die, it resets back to an original save, doesn't it? So mm. I imagine that's well, one of the things, but yeah, it does make a big, I know where you're coming from, it makes a big uh, difference to the feel of the gameplay and the, you know, your investment in it, I think Well, it feels like it flows constantly, like you can, because you, you, it's very you're supposed to keep moving all the time. If you if you stood still, you feel like you're wasting time yeah. uh, because the game obviously rewards combos, quick kills, getting the most in as you can, and you get that where you get you sort of you try and get that sweet spot where you're just blasting through, and you know where you sort of know where everybody is, and you just sort of bat bat bat. You just go through one room straight into the next, smack the guy with the door, and then you throw a knife at him, and you run around the corner, shoot the dog, and it's just the faster <laughs> you can do it, and the better you can get it. Just the slick, just just no quarter given kind of. Yeah, yeah. Gun sort of gameplay. It's great. And as soon as you die, you just jump straight back in. You're just like, I'm going straight through that door again. I'll just yeah. turn left a little bit quicker this time. And you just go and you get into the, the groove of it, I think. Mm. And I don't I don't think that that mechanic would work if the game wasn't so rapid about how it respawned you. I think oh, totally. if, it, if it basically, if it dwelled on it and made you kind of have a five second death animation and then you had to wait for it to say the name of the level again and you had to start again, you would lose that momentum and you mm. just wouldn't mm. feel as addictive. You'd, you'd, would, yeah. you'd give up on it, wouldn't you? you you'd, yeah, you'd, you would. put it down you'd, before. You're kind of training muscle memory when you're playing the game. You, you, you're training yourself to do a very complex series of of maneuvers with your, your hands yeah yeah and it's the joy of of doing that i think that makes it so addictive you wouldn't you wouldn't you know having a snake snake you couldn't do that no you would just you'd throw it out the window wouldn't but, you? Uh, that went it come, 78 thousand times <laughs> i mean moving on to the metal gear solid franchise we might as well because we've all again put that down um mm -hmm. we're all i haven't have you not, are you not are you not Right, it's Final it. again, I keep forgetting there's that many people I talk to. It's Final Fantasy VII that I was shocked about you. You actually are into that. I didn't think you were, and you, I found out you were. But Sam's not into Final Fantasy VII. He's tried a few I times, haven't you? I really tried last time. I really <laughs> did. Got a good 12, 15 hours of gameplay out of it. I and just, just sat, wasn't that bothered. <laughs> sat there the entire time going... Do, do, you know, do you know what, actually? If just I know we didn't want to talk about that particularly, but that game, do you know... If, I think if I'd played it more at the time, I would have appreciated it more. And there was lots of really good stuff about it. Like, I really thought the music was great, even though it sounded a bit Casio keyboard. Like, yeah. the, actual, what, the actual melodies and the stuff they did was really good. And I quite like the ideas. I don't know, like, I just I can't get into that. Everything's in a text box, and then all the combats take your turns, and it just feels like... <laughs> I personally feel like there's a little bit of a lack of... I like agency. I like the feeling that I'm, I'm doing the stuff. And it, it felt like that was removed quite a lot especially the, in that the, type of game. The way that the mobs spawn as well, they don't actually spawn physically, it's just random. It's like random yeah, you encounters. Just, yeah, you just, the screen just blurs and you're into yeah. the fight. Yeah. It's a very Japanese thing though, isn't it? I mean, yes. They, they've tried to, the thing is they've tried to um, 
they tried to address that with subsequent Final Fantasies, and mm. I still don't think they've got it right. From what I'm, from I mean, I don't. I'll be honest with you. I played eight. I played nine. I played ten. I played twelve. I think is twelve the one with lightning. That's thirteen. Well, it's on the PlayStation Three. Thirteen. There we go. And I, I didn't really like any of them. I know eight is a big. It's a fan favorite. Um, mm. I mean, seven obviously is the big fan favorite over everyone. Someone the other day said to me, "There's no Final Fantasy after after Final Fantasy 4. Yeah, well, it's three. Yeah, <laughs> the, the American um, Final Fantasy three or the Japanese Final Fantasy six is mm. probably even more popular than seven. Actually, um, yeah, that was on the, stairs, the connoisseurs of yeah, yeah. Certainly, the connoisseurs of Final Fantasy say that that is the one to play. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I I'm a big Final Fantasy seven fan. That's that's basically my limit of Final Fantasy stuff. Um, I think so much of this stuff is about when you when you play it, what the context in which you experience it, it really matters. Like a, a game like Final Fantasy VII, um, and you look at a game like Metal, the first Metal Gear Solid, just to get back onto that, they came out within, what, one or two years of each other? I think, I mean, yeah. it's a similar time. Final Fantasy VII, I think, was 1998, and I think Metal Gear Solid was as well. I'm not uh, sure on that. I think Final Seven was 97, possibly. 97. It, I might, it's I close. Might be true. It's close. I was but when it came out. It's, for me, I mean, those are like worlds apart, those two games, and just everything about... I mean, they're both super Japanese in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, if you cyborg ninjas and that in Metal Gear. Uh, but it's just a completely different kind of experience. Just before we get onto the Metal Gear stuff, because I know we, we segued with the... Um, uh, with the Final Fantasy stuff, but I'm going to ask you both because I don't know the answer to this. I think I know Sam's answer, but I'm not sure about Lou's. What are your favourite games, Lou? Go. Oh God! And I'm saying games. <laughs> I'm going to give you five at the very most. Five. Okay. I've got, I've got to say, Quake Two is in there. Um, I've got to say, XCOM, um, the, the original. Yeah. Um, UFO Defense, I guess, or whatever you call it in your country. Um, I would say Final Fantasy Seven is in there. I would say um, I've got to say a game called um, Chaos Battle of the Wizards, um, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm wearing a shirt of. Ah. Um, is that an original <laughs> sprite shirt? It it is original, yeah. And there's a there's a guy called Andy in the chat who's uh, who knows more about it as well, and also had quite a few criticisms to make about the shirt because right. <laughs> uh, he's even more of a geek about it than I am, I guess. Um, so that's four, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's four. Uh, um, and the fifth one, I, it's that's really, a really tough one. It's really tough to, to think of five games that I can say I categorically prefer above every other game I've ever played. I could say mm. ten, but if you say... If you, <laughs> <laughs> I, I could say ten, but if you, to, 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 to pick the last one of, of five is like killing your children. It's like, what, where <laughs> do you, what do you put in that slot? <laughs> <laughs> killing all your children or choosing yeah. one to, to kill <laughs> killing all your children all. With, a, with a chainsaw yeah. um, I, I really don't know I'd have to leave that one open because Fair there's enough. always a great games coming out well then Sam okay in no particular order um, definitely the first Metal Gear Solid and it might not be the best or most polished one but just for me when it came out and what it kind of the, the impact that it had on me about what games could be and all that kind of stuff so that's definitely in there um one game that's actually really recent that went straight to the top of one of my favourite lists is uh, The Last of Us, uh, Naughty yeah. Dog Survival. Um, I epic. do. I do want to play that. I haven't played it yet though. It's. I mean, it's really easy to say it's it's a, it's like a gritty, uh, more depressing version of Uncharted, and in a lot of ways it is. But it's it's a lot more than that. Like the controls feel geared towards what it's trying to achieve. You feel. It's really good. It's very immersive. Great story and all that stuff. Like brilliant. Um, it's, on, it's on my wish list, and I will get it at some it's point. It's really good. I mean, because I know that you tried the Uncharted games and everybody got into them, but I think you'll connect with this one more. Um, well, it's different. It feels different. I think to me, the Uncharted stuff. There was a lot of um, unwarranted hype in my eyes because I've been playing games on the PC. Because uh, Uncharted was one. I would say one of the first like proper epic cinematic experiences on the on the consoles probably yeah. i mean i yeah. know it's quite late in the day to say that but the first one probably like in terms of a film there's only metal gear solid that had tried that before maybe everything yeah, else had cut scenes and you know i would say much. that and um, but go on uh, well if you, i was going to just segue into the next one which is talk about the epic thing um and this is it's not the whole franchise as a whole but it's just it's particularly um, Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver, the first one um, on the PlayStation, I 
absolutely adored that game. Like it's no, no other game has writing quite like that where they just. It, I was trying to think of quotes from it, and they're all ridiculously long, and I need to like double check the pronunciations on the words. It's all a very epic, dark, gothic fantasy about destiny and and what it what it means, what you what your duty is to the world, and what your duty is to yourself. And it's all this kind of really heavy, weighty stuff performed by like these brilliant like Shakespearean type voice actors. It's amazing. Like it's, I've, I've if, you play, it. if you play it now, it's really dated in terms of how it looks and plays. Are you but talking about the first one, or the second one? Sorry. The first one in particular, as in Soul Reaver, the one where you play as the guy with the basically with the lightsaber, he was like a blue. I'm race. pretty sure that's the one I played, and I played it on PC. Uh, I mean, in the '90s, I was at college. Someone gave me I, a disc with it. On. I think it was on the PC as well. Um, so, that, I mean, is that, is that three I've done? That's three. Yeah, that's three. Um, I always really had a soft spot for Sonic the Hedgehog three. The third one in particular felt. Is that, really... is that Sonic and Tails? Is that? Yeah, uh, it's got Sonic and Tails and Knuckles in it. Oh. You could have the Sonic Three and Knuckles cartridge thing, where the cartridge fit into the other cartridge, and you had two games. I've got that downstairs, actually. I've never played <laughs> yeah. it, but I've got it. It's, <laughs> it's there's, a persistent, there's a persistent rumor that um, Michael Jackson composed the score for that. He pretty much did. There's actually, there's a, there's a song by his. I can't remember what it's called. It's like you know, it's called Sonic say, and oh, Knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Sonic the Hedgehog Three credit theme. <laughs> 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 No, it's it's one of the songs. It, it, I don't know the title of it, but it's the, it is actually the credits song to Sonic the Hedgehog Three. Has it really sounds like one of his songs that was on like a one of the album tracks. So it's pretty. I think he did, but then he didn't like the the quality of the music that the Mega Drive could create and took his name off it, even though Sega already owned the rights to the stuff that he'd given right. them. Mm, right. Interesting. So I believe I, it's all a bit rumors and hearsay, but I think that was the case. I mean. The music in that game is actually class as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just a well, really... As is anything yeah. Michael Jackson generally. Well, well nah, yeah. actually, that's... maybe not some of the later stuff. But... <laughs> yeah. not, that's not the only um, Mega Drive Michael Jackson fact that I know. Um, when they did Moonwalker, they showed him the animation of him walking and he had um, he had words with the animators about how he walked and they actually had to change the animation to make him kind of walk on tiptoes because <laughs> he, he reckoned that the animation looked nothing like the way he walked. So he was very... Fussy, so I can kind of, I can see some point in that, uh, mm. that story. Do you, do you know what though? At least that's a little bit of artistic integrity on his part. He was like, "That's not you're not representing me properly." Whereas, what was that awful Fifty Cent game? Blood oh, in the Sand, where just like, have you seen that, so, Lou? Someone, have, someone, it's just offensive sold. from start it's to end. Awful. Like in every every possible, it's misogynistic. It's racist. It's racist. It's absolutely terrible. And the Veronic. writing is terrible. There's someone did it. I can't even remember. There was someone who did a I really funny Charlie review. Of it. There we go. Yeah, maybe that. Yeah. On screen wipe or something. One of his wipes. He went into it and laid into it, and it. it yeah, someone <laughs> steals his diamonds. And he goes and shoots a lot of Arabian men to get them back. <laughs> and, it's, and it's some bitch that stole them or something. So him and G Unit all go down there. Oh, it's it's like a, it's like a it's like a parody that actually happened, like a, like a Simpsons parody that just was real. Yeah. Like the kind of game that they would do to show how rubbish games are. It's actually just that. It's <laughs> horrendous. So that's, so your, like that's Jackson, your fourth one, yeah. That's your fourth. Yeah. Sorry, got no friend about this. <laughs> Fifth one. Fifth one, I don't know. Um, probably, if I had to pick a last one, it'd be a toss-up between Ocarina of Time and Red Dead Redemption. Good choices, both of them. Um, both Carbon brilliant Pink games. Sweden. I love them both. I've not played either. Oh, but... Red Dead is a very even now it's worth a play. It's very fun. And, yes. and in fact, multiplayer, it's amazing. But unfortunately, it's just <laughs> console. I was looking it up the other day. Really? I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking about um, asking Lou and our friends if we wanted to like have a play of it because it is a lot of fun multiplayer. Um, mm. If you're with people, you know, because if you're not, you just get shot in the face every five seconds and end up on a donkey. It's yep. ridiculous. Um, but <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I was watching some uh, some YouTube thing. I was doing a review of it again, and that's what got me. That's got me to look at it. But yeah, it's um, it's a really good game, but it's only on consoles even now. It, right? It's. I wish it wasn't. The PC know. version of that game. No, not done, Mom. That's why I've I played it. I don't get why companies do that sort of stuff. Where it's like, right. It's the case of like people will just to sell consoles. Buy it. They're just no, but even from Rockstar's point of view, like I can't understand. Are they not tied to? Are they? Are, are, do they have some shady tie that they can only release games on consoles? Because no, no, because GTA, all of the GTAs have been released yeah. on PC. So, um, yeah, but you know. Rockstar do have a, a 
a history of always releasing the games on PC much later. Yeah. And and, and also saying this game is not going to come out on PC and then a year and a half later it comes out on PC. Red Dead is quite old now though. Red it is Dead Redemption yeah. and it should be out really. It should really be out on PC if it's going to be. And classically as well PC gamers modify uh, games and we were playing at a LAN once. We were playing a GTA. I think it might have been GTA th- uh, Three, possibly. It's by we City, I believe. Multi, multi, multi theft auto. Multi theft auto. Multi theft auto. That was seen that. that was so much fun. Like it's just ridiculous, but it buggy as hell. But really, really fun. And the thing is, on the on the consoles, it was never multiplayer. Some we, we like the PC community modded it so it was multiplayer. I thought that was pretty cool, you know. Yeah. Um. But you know that's just they sh- they should do that. I mean, yeah, it's it, it it's one of the defi- I mean, obviously it's on it's one of the defining games of that generation easily. I mean, how I don't know, but it's all marketing, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's it's their so they sell consoles. The reason that they do <laughs> exclusives is they try to to do it so people who are really f- real big fans of the series would buy it on the co- would buy the console, and it's a co- it's well, a that- war at the end of it, isn't it? The war that Nintendo almost always win, but beside that, it's <laughs> you don't you don't think it, but Nintendo sold more Wii's than the Xbox and PS3 combined, Xbox 360 and PS3 combined. I, yeah, did, I did hear that. They did post a massive loss. Um, I think it was yesterday <laughs> on the Wii U. Yes. Uh, yeah. Despite the fact that um, Mario Kart 8 kind of flew off the shelves. That, well, the thing is with Nintendo as well, they only. And I, I didn't really realise this until recently. They only, um, they only um, sell and produce their own games. They don't, have, they don't take third party studio stuff on. Apparently. What about Sega? What are we thinking of there? What games specifically? Um, I'm saying Sega release games for the Lots Nintendo games. platforms. Yeah. Okay. I maybe believe. maybe <laughs> the fact is is that they only have. Um, they only really make money on their games because they've got a lot of like Mario Kart, before that came out everyone was like, I'm not buying a Wii U and that's the only reason a lot of people have bought a Wii U mm-hmm. and it's 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 one of those things that I've kind of grew up as a Nintendo kid and then ended up being, I've ended up being like everything, I'm, I'm agnostic to it all now, I mean PC kind of lean towards that all the time anyway because it's more flexible but I mean, I'd still play a console. I wouldn't. I wouldn't turn my nose up at one. You know, a lot of people would. Um, yeah. So, what about you? Uh, you've not done yours yet. Oh F- no. Top five. Mine, you mine, to are pro- mine are probably all similar to yours. To be fair, it's kind of a combination of them both. I mean, I have to say, I can never say one of the Metal Gear Solids. I have to say all of them. And that I'm mm. gonna, I'm because I'm the host. I'm gonna cheat and say that I'm, my number one <laughs> is all of the Metal Gear Solids. Um, <clears throat> Uh, okay. Apart from Rising, which I haven't played yet, I've got it on. I've got it on Steam. I got it in the Steam sale, but I haven't played yet. It is cool, but it's not. It's not really Metal Gear, as you know. I, I imagine it's more like Vanquish. It is. It's platinum. So. Yeah. No, oh, well, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, Metal Gear. Um, if I had to choose, I'd probably choose Metal Gear Solid Four out of them all because it was the most polished, and I really <laughs> liked the gameplay, and I loved the story as well, even though it was a bit drawn out towards the end. Two mm. hours of fucking dragging yourself out of a out of a nuclear reactor or whatever he was doing. See, <clears> I <throat> love that bit. What I wasn't that keen on was Merrill getting off with Johnny Sasaki, who's the guy <sighs> who shit himself in all the games, and it's like, yeah. what? I think Merrill deserved a bit better. Oh, man. Spoilers, by the way. There's, <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, <laughs> one one spoiler, or two man. of the other one of the two of the other podcasts that I watch when they're talking about spoilers, <laughs> even if it's old ones, they tend to hold a finger up or, or something like that, or they'll or they'll. Do so, uh, everyone will hold a finger up so people can mute it. So maybe we should do that, something like that. I'm sorry if we're stealing it from anybody, but um, any finger in particular? No, it doesn't matter. Ah, oh, right, okay. <clears throat> I just sorry don't want to start flipping there. people off. Well, I've just I've just flipped everyone off. I know you can't <laughs> see me, guys, but the the stream can. Right. Anyway, um, so yeah, Metal Gear Solid Four, um, Final Fantasy Seven. I can't ever not have that in my top because um, it's probably the game that I have played the most out of every game ever. I've played like games like Skyrim more hours, I imagine. Um, I've played like 200, 300 hours of Skyrim, but I've played through Final Fantasy VII. I, I can't even remember how many times, probably 15, 16 times or something. And I'm sure there are people out there that have played through it a lot more than me, probably Lou included. <laughs> I've, um, I've, I've lost count, but I've, I've also done like single sitting playthroughs. Uh, Same I've here. done 20, 21 hour, uh, locked myself in a room with a few bottles of pop. I did 12 hours. 
12 hours 12 added, hours. and it was, That's I'll tell you what, run. the last boss. Yeah. No, it's, well, the, the fastest is like seven hours or something, it is, isn't yeah. it? yeah. I've watched it the entire speedrun as well. The last boss <laughs> is, a, when you've got no experience, is so hard. So hard, that three-tier that three tier boss is ridiculous. And you That's can't spoiler. get... Oh, come on, Final Fantasy 1998. Come on, I think we can get away with that one. (laughs) There's there's a boss at the end. Sorry, guys. There's a boss, and and he's got three levels. Yeah. Um, So what have I got there? I've got two. Metal Gear Solid. Mm. What did I say? Final Fantasy 7. Final Fantasy 7, yeah. Um, I I struggle, I'll be honest here. I'm going to say Skyrim. I am going to say Skyrim because... I got so much out of it, and because I mean, I know a lot of people have problems with the like the PS4, PS3 version when that came out. It had a lot of problems and lag, and yeah. there was issues with it. Um, I, I had a few issues on the PC. In fact, the the UI on the PC was utterly terrible when that when that came out. We have to we have to modify it to make it playable. Um, but yeah, I I just I'm one of those. I'm when I play games like that, I'm a hoarder. I go out. I, I destroy a dungeon, and as as my weight limit gets to its its maximum, I'll run back to the dungeon um, door, drop all my stuff on the dungeon <laughs> door, run back in, finish the dungeon, as, and I'll keep doing that until I've got everything. And that, then that's... it's crazy, man. I, honestly, you should see the houses that I've got set up in Oblivion, Skyrim, and uh, at Morrowind. I probably haven't got my Morrowind save anymore, actually. But well, I um, think that, that speaks for most people's experience of it, especially, especially the first playthroughs. You end up picking everything up so that you've got a million so loaves of bread in your pack. It's so <laughs> roll, <shiny>. sweet roll. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that Quama brings up a eggs. point, actually. That, that brings up a point that um, an interesting conversation I had with a friend of mine once before. Um, the, some people play games to collect, um, some people play games to get achievements. Um, there's a certain kind of a. a I guess kind of a, a card collection, sort of panini sticker book effect on a lot of games mm. that some people really go for and some people don't. I mean, I, I don't really care about achievements or about collecting everything in a game, but some people are obsessive about that. I'm not... I hate... I absolutely hate open-world games like GTA. Um, probably, I haven't played it, but probably um, that new one, hacking one, what's it called? Watch Dogs. Oh, Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs. Um, probably all similar because they're all from the same... You know, the same generation. There's so much crammed into them that's pointless. Like mm-hmm. I'm not just talking about the collectibles. I'm talking about some of the quests as well. It's like some of it. Some of them don't even give you experience for them. They're just for achievements. I don't buy into achievements. I'm not one of these who has a. I mean, I've got a twenty-five thousand gamer score on Xbox or something, but that's only because I've got so many games and I've played all, played a lot of them through. You know. I went through a phase of making sure that I I played everything through to get my value out of it because. And now I've just got a stack of 20 or 30 that I haven't played yet. I haven't actually got round to because I've been <laughs> doing that. Um, yeah, but I, 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 it really, really winds me up. The amount of crap that they put into games these days that is, doesn't need to be there. The flags in Assassin's Creed. Oh, the feathers and, the, and <laughs> feathers. fucking pigeons in GTA 4. Oh, those pigeons could get... Suck my balls. That's what they can <laughs> yeah. do. They can I suck my swear, balls. They could fuck off those pigeons. Like, <laughs> awful. <laughs> Yeah, spoiler by the way, there's pigeons in GTA 4 if you ever fucking play it. Bingo! And you have to kill them. You have to kill the pigeons. Yeah. I don't even know what you get in GTA 4. You know when you do GTA games, you you get all the the ambulance missions and you get like a health pack at your house. You do that stuff in GTA 4 and you get nothing. You get an achievement. You just go, yeah, but I don't want that. I want no, an in-game want, thing that want, actually affects the game. You've put so much effort into this game and so much effort into the detail of this game. I mean, for God's sake, look at the, you know, the, the put... Six TV Ridiculous channels detail. into them, and and you can just sit and watch TV in the game. You know, mm. if you've put that much effort into it, unlock another channel or something when that happens, or unlock unlock something that I can do in the game. You know, it's like when I finished GTA Five. That, I mean, that was I, I'd had so much money in that game that I went I went and bought everything, and that was it. I, I'd finished, and it was like, but I could still play the game. You know, there was not much more. But I'm one of these who does all the side missions first instead of the main missions. So Yeah, me too. Speaking yeah. of GTA, that's probably my fourth game, I'd say. Which uh, one? GTA San Andreas because of the amount of... Uh, so I'm, I'm probably going to regret all of these decisions because they're not... <laughs> I, I, I want to put Quake 2 in there, but Quake 2 isn't one of the games that I still really hold in high regard in terms of... Hang on, Lou, I can see your face um, nearly imploding there. <laughs> I love Quake 2 and I love to play with my friends. 
but it's it holds a special place in my history, in my gaming history. But it it's not a great game anymore. It was a great game. Oh, this is how are we analysing this? Is it is FPS it when is it aged came badly. out? Mm. FPS, first shoot is age badly. I still think Quake Two looks quite good for its age, though. I'll be honest with you. I think, the age, the I think age Doom looks good. Ways. Uh, well, the most recent like modifications to Doom and that I think I quite actually quite enjoy playing them because the control system's easier to get your head around. You know when you've got full three sixty um, FOV and you can not FOV. That's ridiculous. Three um, sixty. You know what I mean? You, yeah, you've got three sixty movement with your mouse and like <laughs> yeah. one hundred and eighty up and down, and, and that makes a big difference. I think to to me playing the game because I don't know. I felt when I played the original Doom, I felt a little bit like a little bit restricted. I think, but. Just spoiled, I think, by modern games. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to have a think about my fifth again, though. It I is hard, isn't I it? I don't just want to say this game. Um, I'm even reconsidering Skyrim. I, 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 <laughs> it's so hard. At least I've got my... T- I mean, if I had to say one of my top ones, like the top out of all of those, I'd probably go with Metal Gear, I think. Oh, just... That's, yes, while you guys were talking, I came. I thought of this one. Deus Ex. Oh, Original yeah, Deus that's, Ex. that's my fifth. That's there my we go. fifth. It's one of them fanboy things, but I I distinctly remember when it came out. I remember getting a demo, and I remember watching Lou play the demo and die about a million times at a LAN party, <laughs> over and over and over, because he just did not know how to play a stealth game at the time, or he didn't yeah. understand that particular mechanic. And it was brilliant because I was like, oh, I've done it like six times through, and I've got all the extras and the secrets, and there's a there's a boat down there, and there's a that. I mean, you haven't played the original Deus Ex, have you, Sam? No, I haven't. Um, I'm kind of thinking, is it worth? I get it. I can get it on the. PlayStation Network. I wonder if it's worth getting. Does it again? Given that I didn't play it at the time, do you think it will hold up on its own merits? Yes, because there is a mem. There's a mem that goes around, or a meme, or whatever you want meme. to call it. Um, there's, a, there's a meme that is um, every time you mention Deus Ex, somebody installs it, and yep, it, it is true because I've got it installed all the time because I always go back to it. I might only play like the first couple of levels every time I go back to it, but I get, get a bit addicted to it and kind of yeah brilliant that's the they're the kind of games that i like though lots of detail lots of things that you can do in them multiple ways to achieve you know go around each problem like dishonored and and you know those kind of open-ended a lot of games are going down that route though recently i noticed that another one that we've all got i think maybe not you so much i think we maybe mentioned this the other day um the um wolfenstein the new wolfenstein game oh, i want to get that it looks really cool we will try not to spoil it but me and lou have played it i haven't played it through yet um right. but i tell you what there is some really cool mechanics in it there's one in particular yeah. that involves a, a fence and a ah and a, uh, yeah yeah i won't go into that because yeah. i don't want to spoil it for you but it's oh, the fence bit but no, it's 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 really clever as a developer, especially as someone who tries to do these things and implement them. It's really interesting that they've actually transcended another bound, you know, another thing in a game. And I'm sure it's been done before the similar kind of thing. But when it's inside a game and it's organic, and it's not just yeah. shoehorned in, it feels really nice. But Wolfenstein is a wonderful FPS. It's it doesn't take itself seriously. Mm-hmm. The gun, it's yeah. really solid. It feels good to play. I think I've got to disagree with you about the game mechanic, though. I'm not going to spoil what the game mechanic is, but I do feel that it was very gimmicky. And I think that's not the real strength of the game. The real strength of the game is that it doesn't take itself too seriously, and it throws in a lot of old-school game mechanics. I mean, when was the last time you played a game where you picked up, like, 10 helmets in a room to give yourself No, you're uh, right, some, you're some right. Armor? It's, it's really got that old-school feel about it, and they've, really, they've, they've not been afraid to explore that or go back to that kind of mechanics. Um, yeah. And as a result of it, it's a, just a very solid game with p- good cutscenes, um, and it looks great, and it, it feels, as you say, it feels solid, it feels chunky and heavy. Yeah. No, you're right, it does, and I, and I don't feel like my, when I'm aiming with my mouse, it doesn't feel like it's flying off in a place that, you know, I, there's a lot of games that even when you turn off the mouth, the mouse smoothing and things like that, they still feel a bit laggy or they don't feel quite right. But I, it does; it's very solid to me. When you're talking about that with that particular mechanic that we're talking about, I've only just come across it in the game. Like literally, mm. only just picked up the the item, and I, I, it's like when I when I did it. I, oh, fair enough, it might be gimmicky, but I really I really thought it was well done. I I felt I felt that. I liked the fact that it was dy- as dynamic and it wasn't set. Even though the yeah, it, some of it's set, you know, it's got certain boundaries, but 
it's really hard to say without spoiling it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just I don't think it adds. Um, I, I don't think it adds a kind of an extra dimension to the game. I mean, certainly comparing it to Deus Ex, where basically you can approach pretty much every mission entirely how you want to, and then play I it again. So fair, and, yeah, and I, I think I think Wolfenstein is again. fairly linear. Yeah, it is. Well, However, the reason I mentioned it, it's linear in terms of the story and in terms of the general feel of the gameplay, but I have noticed when I was playing it that they they seem to incorporate multiple ways to get to somewhere, not necessarily approach a problem, because I don't see many problems in the game. It's a shooter at the end of the day. It's not mm. a problem-solving game. It's not a puzzle game. Um but there is multiple routes. I mean, for example, right at the beginning, I'm not spoiling anything by saying this, but I'll hold my finger up just in case people want to turn turn things off. Um, right at the beginning of uh, uh, of the game, you, you you go into a bunker, and there are three ways to get into the bunker. That's that's simple as that, you know. And that's uh, I just I've noticed that that's been added, put into games these days. The level designers are taking it on board for almost any type of game, or quite a lot of FPS games, at least, anyway. And I, I like that, but it still has to be done right. Yeah. It still has to be approached in the right manner, you know? Yeah. Anyway, wittering on again. It's, um, um, it's, it's, it's an interesting debate be- between choice and, and what, the, what game they're trying, what experience they're trying to give you. Because um, if you look at something like Mass Effect, especially the third one, I'm guessing we all played that. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's console only. Well, it was console only. It's on PC yeah, I just, now. I tried to play the original Mass Effect and I couldn't get into it. Well, okay, fair enough. Um, I will put a spoiler. I'm not going to go into the ending, but spoiler, the endings were not as diverse as people wanted them to be. Yeah. Um, right? So, Don't get me started. Think, whatever it is, whatever your personal thoughts about that are, there's always that thing of, well, there was a, there was, there was a, there was a story that Bioware were trying to tell and you could what you could have wanted these wildly different endings where, you know, Shepard's head turned into a unicorn and one where he won and everything was perfect, and then one where everyone died or whatever. But I, I, there's a certain it, it comes a point where you think, well, these guys wrote the story and they, they had their story to tell, and even if there's lots of open-ended options, there isn't though. That's the problem. The problem people had is that all three of the choices all resulted in the same thing, effectively. <laughs> More or, or, or less a slightly the same different thing. cut scene at the end, but games have been doing that yeah. forever, though. That's the thing. Yeah. It's I really mean, I weird. Think... You, sorry, just one side segue. It's really weird you referring to Shepard as a he because I played it all as a she. And, it's, <laughs> and I'd, yeah. I'd never, I've never even looked at the male character. Sorry. Well, he looks on. like what you want him to look like, doesn't he? Because you make his face. No, like, I mean, um... I, I, yes. You've still got a basic shape, though, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not man a, shape. Yeah. Man shape. Yeah. Um, but it, I, I kind of. Uh, like a game like like I talked about earlier, like The Last of Us, is not. There's a lot of open-ended gameplay in terms of you approach situations the way that you see fit in order to get through and survive. But the story is the story. Like you can't change any of the cutscenes. You can't. There's no optional dialogue. The, the it's all there for you. They're telling their story. How you get through the game itself is up to you. And that I kind of like that. I'm not. I'm not. I don't dislike choice things, but things like Infamous and that with the choice system, oh, it inf- feels like they ha- they had to put it in there because the game was called Infamous and you have good and evil options and it's like... Well, that will have been a main mechanic that they designed it around. They want to, put, they want to shoehorn that in. It was a main thing for the game. It, they did, but it, it kind of felt like the game could have been fine without it. It just electrical powers, superhero was enough, you know? Yeah. Like, it didn't need that. Have um, you played the, the most recent one, by the way? Second song. Uh, no, it's only on. Oh, new, it's, it's only... only on next generation, isn't it? Yeah, I I've yet I to get a new yet. console yet. Um, I might do. I don't know. Yeah, you uh, will. You will do. Of course, you will. You're I not going to let Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain go without playing it, are you? No, I meant I meant play Second Son. Oh, I'll oh, definitely right. be playing Metal Gear. It's <laughs> not even a. It's probably. I'll probably wait until the Phantom Pain comes out, then be like, now I have to get one. <laughs> like I have to if, play if this game. If that game works, that might creep into my top five. Mm. It may do. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, any of you guys got any games you specifically want to talk about then? Uh, so we've got a list, but... Um, well, I think a, a neat segue probably would be to talk about Stanley Parable. I know that you played it. I don't know if Sam's played it or not. I, PC only. I, know, I know about it. I know that it's sort of... Sorry, I just need to adjust where I'm sitting. I'm on a couch. I don't have a desk to sit at, so I get a bit uncomfortable in certain positions. Um, 
I, I know what it is. I know the basics of it. It's not really mm. even a game, really, that much, is it? It's kind of a... It is a game, but it it's... isn't a game. <laughs> yeah. You start the game, yet you never start the game. Yet you finish the game, but you never finish the yeah, bollocks. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's. I played it um, for about six hours. Um, I, I, I'm amazed I lasted that long. I'll be honest. It wasn't that I didn't like the game. I really like those ex- exploration games. I enjoyed um, Gone Home, for example, just because it's different, you know. And it's a, it's a and it, and the story's done quite well, I think, for me in, in Gone Home, for example. But yeah, the Stanley Parable it is odd to say the least. I think um, it's not a typical. You don't run around shooting people or anything like that, and there are multiple endings. In fact, there are lots of endings. Many, about, many endings. About twenty or thirty endings. Yeah. But the thing is, when it ends, it doesn't end. And then you go, you can some. You know, say for example, you finish a game, and then you might start it back. You know, like old eight bit games or whatever. You finish it, and then it might start back in a loop and be a bit harder. You don't yeah. get that or this. You get you start back, but you might be in a loop. But your previous decisions might affect you, but they might not affect you. Mm. It might reset itself back to the very start, but it might also reset itself. And then the narrator is very clever as well, the way that they've done that. I felt it didn't feel forced, apart from some of the times when it repeated itself occasionally, but it didn't do that too much. What, yeah. What's your thoughts on it, Lou? Um, well, I was just I was very impressed by the 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 amount of a time that had gone into the different threads of the story. Um, like you say, sometimes it felt like I was ending the game and starting again, but then I'd walk out the room and it'd be completely different. Uh, or, or, or exactly the same with a slight difference, or, yeah, or yeah, the narrator was... would say something slightly different, or if you made a different decision, he would. Yeah, sorry. And that that made it really intriguing. I think the problem I had with it really was that after about two, maybe three hours of playing it, I got I got the concept of it, and it kind of spoiled it for me because then I just looked on a wiki to see what the endings were. I did exactly <laughs> the same, and I'll be honest with you. You know, the um, there's one particular. Um, I'm going to hold my finger up again just in case and I I don't think this will spoil it for you Sam but um, there's one particular puzzle in it that is you have to press a button and the button kind of stops this this I don't I know not, what you, you mean. know what I'm not going to spoil it for Sam but um I know the, what you mean that yeah. particular puzzle do you have you read about that one do you know how I've it ends I've not read about it but I I did spend about an hour just running around the room trying to figure it out there are th- there are three different endings to it and one of them takes four hours <laughs> um and the uh, you know the first time that i played that i didn't do it at all i was ruthless absolutely ruthless with it and just walked literally just left it but um yeah anyway we're talking in code again because we don't want to spoil things for you but yeah essentially <laughs> it's it's worth a play it's totally different don't expect action from it you know um no i already know it's not like that i've seen stuff about it um I think the, it seems to me like it's a game that just sort of challenges how much you're willing to do what you're told or not. That seems to be the basic yeah. premise of it. It's yes like, and no, yeah. It, the narrator sort of says, and then Stanley went left, and you go right, and it's like he obviously took a wrong turn. And it doesn't it do that sort of thing where it's it's sort of it's sort of guiding you, but are you supposed to disobey or are you supposed to just uh, that concept sounds sort of interesting, but I'm not sure how how much of it you could take before you just got annoyed. It, it it repeats itself um, a bit too much for it to be interesting for too long. I think it's not something that I think I'll go back to, but it was worth the amount I paid for it. I, I got it for a couple of quid or something, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it it's a gimmick. It's a clever gimmick. It's a very clever gimmick, but it is a gimmick still, and, and it means that it's it's not a reusable thing. Once once you've been fooled by it, it's like someone telling you a joke. After mm-hmm. they've told you it, you kind of you get it, and it's not funny anymore. It's it, but the surprise and the. The, the, the going through it for the first time is a great experience, and that alone is worth buying it for. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So it's, it's it's worth it. I'd go for that. Um, what other things have we all put on the list that we're all uh, interested in? Have you played um, XCOM Enemy Unknown, uh, Sam? Uh, no, I haven't. Do you know? Is it worth picking up? I know. Um, I, is it a RTS? game yeah it's, it's a turn no, based it's, t- yeah, turn best it's strategy. a turn based strategy and basically you control a unit of men that you well men and women um that the enemy unknown is the original one enemy yeah. within is the up the dlc and i would recommend starting with enemy within go straight for the right. dlc because it's it's one of the few one of the topics i wanted to talk about was dlc actually and we might get onto that in a minute um yeah 
my personal beliefs on DLC is that it shouldn't exist, but in this particular instance, I think it is well worth it. There are few and far between DLCs that I think are worth it, and this one is one. Go on. uh, if we're going to go straight into DLC, it, I agree with you that I don't think as a, it it should only exist for very certain things. Um, I, I think it's basically used as an excuse to to make you pay twice. Like they just they, they release a game full price, um, which I don't know what the new console ones are. Is it fifty or is it forty? Is it fifty or forty? What quid? the price? Um, they're, yeah, well, for a PS4 between fifty game. and sixty these at the moment, brand new ones. Jesus, I mean, like, so you play, so you get a game like um, we pay about thirty on PC. You get for the well, same yeah. games. <laughs> you get a game like say Titanfall, which was was the Xbox One's like big. Wow, you get in mechs and it's super ultra graphics, shooty Call of Duty men stuff. Yep, <laughs> and it's like the campaign's about twenty minutes long or whatever, and then you know that there's just going to be this big DLC that actually makes the game good. But you've already paid for it, and you've you've already had it for like five months, and then this DLC comes out that actually makes the game maybe worth playing or makes it more interesting, and that's another twelve quid, whatever, and it's it's a rip off, yeah. basically. I think it's and it contextual. happens in a lot of games. Yeah, I think it's contextual. I mean, we've been playing quite recently um, Borderlands Two. I've basically been hammering it, and the DLC for that is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, each one is is a is a mini version of the full game, and it's got the same kind of quality as well. Um, but I, I think that's probably another subject entirely about the, uh, how I feel about Borderlands and the the time and effort and love that's gone into it. Yeah. But there's a lot of games where you can tell um, Battlefield, for instance, they, they've already got it all lined up. They release the game full price and they release the DLCs for whatever twelve quid, fifteen quid. Um, and then they have the premium packs and the yeah. Yeah, subscription and yeah. models, and uh, that's just kind of triple A sort of. It's not always triple really, A though, it? because I mean, if we, while we're talking about DLC, I think it's um, it's worth talking about um, pre what what they call pre release alphas. What the um, um, uh, early access, early access pre alphas. Yeah. Now, I've only bought um, a couple of early access games, and they've been almost complete. They're quite close. Or they're good enough for the time being. I, I bought Prison Architect, which you may have heard of. Um, very fun game. I mean, I proper. I went to town on it uh, one weekend. I think it was a weekend. I was last at yours, Lou, actually. And uh, yeah. I went to absolute town on it, and then got a bit bored. And I, I, I killed. You know, I, I went. I went mental. I built like six massive prisons, and I got everything in them. And then just kind of haven't played it since. And there's been three or four alpha updates since then. I think that's actually symptomatic of uh, introversion software. Do they, they, they tend to do that a lot with the games? They even they'll work on a, a game prototype for two or three years and then just drop it. Well, they haven't very dropped this. It's. I no. think this is going ahead. I'll be honest with you. I think this will finish. This will end. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm certain that it will finish and it will end, but it will take a long time to get there. And I think they they do a lot of dilly dallying about. And from what I can see of their developer logs, they spend more time kind of dicking about than they do. Sorting the game out. Right. I don't. Um, I don't read the developer logs that much. I do speak to them occasionally on Twitter and get involved with their polls. And they do ask a lot of the fans, "What do you want to see next?" So it's that. That's a bit dangerous, I think, sometimes, especially if it's in pre-alpha. Because at the end of the day, you've got to you've got to design a game, and you've got to have some core mechanics and core principles before you can actually start work on it. Really. And then once you start the pro, I think the problem that they might have is that they started work on it, and then they're continuing to add new features rather than improve the existing features. Yeah. However, two alphas ago, I think it was, they spent the entire alpha phase um, fixing bugs, and I think they'll keep doing that as they go along. They'll do extra features, fix a lot of bugs, extra features in that. Do you um, the, the thing you said about them asking their um, their own audience what they want? Have you? Have you all seen that episode of The Simpsons? It's like they're doing Furbies, but it's not Furbies. They're like, it's a Christmas one. And they have this like focus group basically takes over the school. And they're sort of asking their kids what they want. And all these kids are just like, oh, I want something that explodes. I want a teddy bear. I want a unicorn. And it's like, so they ask all these kids what they want. And just, there's no way to say this without sounding slightly wanky and pretentious. But if you're... If you're involved in making a game or any sort of entertainment, you you are effectively an artist, and you kind of got to have a little bit of trust in your own vision of what you want to make. If you just go right, everybody tell us what to make a mint game. Everyone's gonna be like, well, it's got to blow up, 
and have big boobs in it and have fast cars and like you're just going to get all that stuff and it's like well i wanted to do this well do that then if that's what you wanted to do if you were trying to tell this story or give this experience make that yeah. like you, sometimes you've got to give people they don't you don't know what you want if something comes out and surprises me that i didn't know i'd enjoy then that's brilliant i love that absolutely agree. i think there's there's a there's a big danger as a especially as an indie developer who doesn't have the structure you know the corporate structure behind them and the and the support network i think there's there is a danger of listening to your fans a little bit too much sometimes mm. as you said it's i think it's um at the moment for example i'm i'm changing things all the time with our game but i'm changing them because of the workflow and because of the uh, restrictions that we have as a team i'm not changing them because of what other people are saying at the moment i will when we get a finished game that i am happy and finished you know when it's actually done that point that's when i'll take feedback and there'll be a certain period when i'll take feedback and then mm. after that i'll look at all the feedback and go I'll speak with the team and I'll say, what do you think is worth getting in the game? What will make it more fun? What will enhance the mechanics? And I think they probably do that, but I think there is a danger of, when you're in pre-alpha um, early access, I think there's a danger of it going to, to, on too long. And we've seen it a few times. Um, projects fail. Indie studios go under. Um, people have paid for a game previously. I mean, I paid 20 quid for Prison Architect. When, it, when I wanted it and it's now like I think I could get it for six or seven quid in one of the sales mm. and you know what well, it's it's I don't know it's it's one of those it's one of those subjects that you can go on for it's, a, I think a while. It, it, you know everyone <clears throat> knows the phrase designed by committee and everyone knows that it's a bad thing and that's exactly what you're getting with that you're getting designed by a huge committee mm. and because yeah. you're doing early access and you're basically saying please fund my game you, you're also saying and because you funded my game, I'm going to allow you some control over it. And it's the wrong attitude. I really do think it's the wrong attitude. I know that's the thing. Totally that, that is what a lot of studios aren't doing as well. And <clears throat> gamers are thinking, their funders are actually thinking that they have some control over it. Look at what happened to Oculus. You know, I know that's not game development, but Oculus got bought out by Facebook. Everyone yep. was up in arms. I want my money back. It's not. That's not what you've done. You've 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 donated to them. You've given them that money for them to do what they want with it. It's not up to you what they do with that money. They're not obliged to tell you what they do with that money. They're not obliged to do yeah. anything. Kickstarter has a certain number of uh, of rules, but it doesn't have. You must give your um, you must give shares out or things like that. You know, and I don't, in fact, I think there's even a rule to say you can't give shares out. I'll be honest with you. Um, so that's the point. It's like gamers have always feel entitled because games are the type of medium. You watch a film and you watch that film for two or three hours and it's done. And it's 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 a set. So everyone gets the same experience from that. And, mm. you know, obviously people take away different things, but you get the same experience. When you play a game, you're playing your game, even though us as developers, we, we have um, we've provided the tools for you. We provided the the mechanics and the toolkit to make your experience as as good or bad as we can make it. But as a gamer, you invest into that game. You feel like that you own a little bit of it. So gamers gen ten generally tend to have this in t sense of entitlement. Mm. And I've yeah, been I I've so. been there before as well myself. Um, and that's the problem with this Kickstarter thing. It gives them even more of a sense of entitlement. And the and the thing is with the games <clears> industry is it will explode if it's a big thing, if it's attracted a lot of attention, if it's taken a lot of money, it's going to explode. People are going to be unhappy. There's always a percentage of your fan base that are not going to be happy with things. Um, mm. I'm getting on a bit of a rant there again. Sorry. I'm well, <laughs> no, it, it's, it, you can probably see that effect happening as well. If you look at uh, MMOs, um, the way that... They, they, because their audience is paying for that MMO every month, or some of the older ones anyway, um, there's even more of that sense of entitlement and that sense of the absolute kind of rage and at, at the, the developers changing something. Like, oh my God, they've nerfed my sword. Yeah. And it's my sword. Yeah. I've just put 17,000 hours into farming that sword. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There is that as well. Yeah. If you spend so much, so long, it's not, yeah. That, it's time and money. It is, and yeah. to be fair, developers are under a lot of stress from all angles, not just the gamers. If you're an AAA, a triple A developer, then you um, then you've got pressure from your publishers, and you've got pressure from your management, your executives, pressure from sales, and you know from is this going to do well enough? 
to pressure from innov innovation as well. You have to make mm -hmm. things more interesting, move them on, use the latest technology, use the latest shared management tools, and you know everything. You have to take that. Luckily, as indies, we get a lot off, let off with a lot of things. But we're we're digressing into uh, indie game development and yeah, politics around. Uh, so yeah, we were talking I, about I DLC. It interesting. <laughs> it, well, it's. Oh yeah, DLC. That was the original thing. Wasn't yeah. it? Uh, <laughs> kind of went off onto a rant then. So, um, I think it, I think it was my turn on the DLC. I think you guys had. Uh, I think we both had a go. Yeah, I've used, so you said you don't agree with it, but you didn't really say why. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm a similar, similar opinion to Lou. Actually, the DLC to me, we come from uh, a background of games like Command and Conquer, for example, that released many extensions and updates. Mm. to it and it released free content packs and free additional um i'm thinking of ra2 specifically um uh why do i say ra2 red alert 2 red that's alert it come 2. on cook red alert 2 so i was thinking rocket arena in my head um <laughs> yeah so um it it comes from the developers will do this and then they'll publish an extension and that is today's dlc however dlc is slowly slowly becoming this micro payment micro transaction thing yep. and there's a new game that's coming out and i and i i'm going to repeat something that someone said on a, a stream that i watched uh, yesterday or the day before um evolved uh, not evolved destiny is destiny yes is the, the new from bungie there's one one of the uh, uh, it's either something evolved or, if, or is it evolve uh, where evolve. you basically it's four four players against a monster is that might the one? Be, yeah. Anyway, the game. <clears throat> I can't remember what the game is. The point is, is this game's coming out, and it's going to be all about um, microtransactions. You you can you can work your way towards, like you can with all MMOs, you can work your way towards getting the loot. But the additional thing is, you can buy the loot. So if you've got enough money, you can pay to win. Essentially, right. now there's the problem is, is this game that's coming out, and I should really have made a note of what it is because it's quite important. Sound, sounds like Destiny to me. If it, 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 There's a it game that's like coming Destiny. out that's going to be focused on this. Now, the the host of that other show, I think it was the co-optional podcast um, by Polaris, um, it was either that one or or, uh, or the No, which is uh, the, um, the Rooster Teeth guys. They do a podcast. <clears throat> Rooster Teeth's Red vs. Blue, the... Um, yeah, uh, Halo yeah. thing. Anyway, so um, yeah, so they did a they did a podcast, and one of them said that what we need to do is boycott it right now. We need to stop buying these these weapons and armor and um, fair enough aesthetic things. I'm happy with you if you want to buy an aesthetic thing to make your character look nicer and make you unique and stand out. That's cool, but buying to enhance your gameplay, I think, is mm -hmm. very damaging because it's yes. going to make developers lazy and it's going to make them charge you 60 quid up front and then rip you off for the next 10 years you know by releasing content and releasing um releasing new weapons and new characters and you know all that kind of stuff i i, I just i i it really it, it makes me quite angry when i think about it i'm trying I, to keep it in, to be honest. i <clears throat> i just say that i think that that as an idea pay to win it runs it's diametrically opposed to what I consider computer gaming to actually be about. It's 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 the exact opposite of what you do. You don't like if you were to get Super Mario Brothers and you just be like, right, well, if you pay us like a quid, you could just jump to the next level. And it's like, what's the point? What's the point? Why don't I just pay you to watch the end credits? How about that? Because yeah. like, there's lots of different <laughs> models. Though. I want to play it in. There's lots it's of different paid. models of that pay to win model because there's the there's the free to play model where you you yes. don't pay for the game and then you pay for content. Now I played yes. a game a mobile game a while back called King Kingdoms of Camelot and it's mm. um I think we played a game similar online years ago called Planet Side or not Planet Side Planetarian um, Planetarian Planetarian Planetarium <laughs> yeah um, Planetarium was actually uh, it was a browser game it was one of the first of its kind i believe and it was um, it was really fun it was like all numbers and it was very maths based and you sent your fleet off to fight and it took them a few hours and then they came back and you'd found out how well they did and how bad how bad they did and everyone was kind of fighting the same way but Kings of Camelot is similar to that but it's all based on a map you know a single map it's all visual and you send off your troops your armies uh, and you have to time it right to get to players and then people can buy gems 
So you pay 70 quid for a thousand gems or something, and those gems can be used to... The most annoying thing is the people... When I played it, I got quite good at it, but I didn't buy any gems until really, really late on, and then I, I bought a few, and then I realised that this could get messy, so I got out of it, you know? There's people who buy thou like thousands of these gems, and they can use it to instantly like transport their, their troops to the location, so that you can, you can get big guilds that would all use the gems at the... You know, they'll send a... a a march it might say 60 minutes it takes this this march to get to you so you're sat there waiting and you're getting your defenses already and then say for example one of the main tactics was one person would send their troops to you take them 15 minutes to get to you when that 15 minutes hits everybody else in the guild sends their troops and uses the gems and it and like you get absolutely trounced even if you've got all your defenses up and all your all your all of your army just gets wiped out because they're using these gems and it's it's a totally unfair way to play you know there's a lot of strategy in those kind of games you have to time it you have to coordinate yourselves with the guild you have to understand what everyone else is doing and be you know communicate it rather than go everyone hit your gems now you know it's mm. it's horrible i think it's a you know that that mechanic exists but there are a lot of people who played that game who couldn't afford to buy the gems they would have probably quite happily paid for the game originally and then played a game, but not consistently buy a thousand gems at seventy quid every time, you know? Is it a different market though? Is is this is this not the same market that that, that we are a part of? That that's why I was mentioning Destiny or, or the other game or whatever it is. Because it's coming to us it's coming to us serious gamers as well. There's a casual market. The people who played that game are people who can't be bothered playing. Uh, sorry, I'm generalising here. That the, the people who play who play a lot of mobile games like that, they generally are more into the casual. I'd like to log on for a few minutes, but I mean, there were some people who were really, really addicted to it. But they wouldn't play a PC game. You wouldn't see them on a mouse and keyboard or on a console. They just played these mobile games. And you're right, it is a certain market. But the mm. problem is, is that model is very slowly coming over to us and especially with the new generation of um, consoles out there you've got millions of people who are susceptible to going oh that's only a quid oh that's only another quid that's five quid that's a tenner i'll have that that's only a two quid a and it it adds up and it and it perpetuates into this horrible mess where all games will end up like that i don't know if you remember a while ago sam sorry i'm uh, not Sam, um, Lou. <laughs> I don't know if you remember you a while ago when um, GameSpy um, was quite big. And there was a point where all of the GameSpy access might be chargeable. Yeah. There was. A, I can't remember exactly. File the... planets and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, and it was. It, it came to a point where we were we were used to having access to servers, paying for servers if we wanted our own dedicated servers. But we actually got to a point where. Are we going to actually have to pay to use GameSpy so we can access the master servers and actually get lists of servers and play randomly every night? Luckily, yeah. that went out the wayside, but that's another one of those things that could have changed the game, like serious gamers, for a long time. You know, I've, I've got to say that that, that it, yeah, it, it sounds like it's kind of almost apocalyptic for games, but <laughs> this sort of stuff will only take effect if people accept it. That's the problem. Uh, that's the problem. That's the problem no, I'm saying. It? People like you you and me won't do that, Lou. No offence to Sam. I know Sam's a bit more serious than maybe quite a lot of console gamers, but people who focus on consoles aren't connected with the technical side. They don't True. they don't understand the hows and whys, and they just go, oh, that's only a quid. You know, that's what I mean, and that's the danger. Even though there are more PCs sold out there, there are still less enthusiast PCs out there than... There are consoles, you know. The console consoles are always going to outsell PCs for gaming. The PCs are making a comeback recently. They, they are, they are definitely, and the indie scene has made a big difference to that. But what I'm saying is, I think what I'm doing here. I'm, I know we've only got eight people watching the stream right now, or whatever. <laughs> Hopefully, all the people will see it. But the the point is, is that you need to. There needs to be a stand made against DLC as a general rule. I think <laughs> that it's not. <laughs> There have been good ones though. Like the, They've been the very Undead good. Nightmare, the Undead Nightmare DLC for Red Dead Redemption was brilliant. Like, I, I was, agree, but that's like an expansion. Twenty hour game. That's an expansion it, that you can download. Yes. That's not DLC that I'm talking about. I'm talking about you're this. talking about the microtransactional yes. sort of buying items sort of thing. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, I think that's awful. Um, they did it in yeah. Dead Space Three actually, so that already has crept into a very major title. And Call of Duty, you know. Yeah, are they doing it in that as well? Are they? Yeah, they've been and doing played. that since Call of Duty. Three, two, or three, or something. Modern Warfare. I don't know if I haven't played. 
Uh, I don't know if you've seen recently, but uh, World of Warcraft's doing that now as well. So you yeah. pay your subscription and you can pay for items. Mm. Oh, and, come on, really? and the thing is the fun <laughs> oh, I say the fun the, the, one of the things about World of Warcraft is grinding you know that's one of the, if you play an MMO you need to grind you know that's, that's yeah. basically the premise we've been grinding since EverQuest you know I mean, we've, we've been playing lots of different MMOs <laughs> that sounds filthy yeah. Chris <laughs> we've been grinding since EverQuest well, well you can take that however you want to take it <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't what, want to take it Chris that's the I don't want to take it if you want to you get that, that. If you want to get that tier three, you know, awesome shoulder pad or whatever with the spikes, you want to go out. You want to you want to go to next Ramus and you want to beat the crap out of the the guild boss with a twenty man raid or whatever. You know, I mean, I'm a bit out of date with World of Warcraft, so that might even not exist anymore next Ramus. But you know what I mean? It's like if you want to do that, you play that game and you do it for hours and hours and hours, and you get involved with your guild and you and but paying for that piece of armor. I mean, I can understand it from the point of view from someone who's busy. And doesn't have time to play games, which I'm kind of getting into that category myself. But I still wouldn't pay for that content. It's, well, I, I've got to say that when I was playing EverQuest, I actually quite a few times bought uh, bought money, bought platinum pieces. I never did. Um, and I played a game recently called Battle Pirates, which is a Facebook game. Yeah, and I, I, saw, yeah. I, I tallied up how much I'd spent on it. I'd spent nearly three hundred pounds on it. That's more than I'd spent on any other oh, game I've ever played. I know, and that's the thing; it adds up. But it is damaging, if you think about it, because, I mean, how many games are there out there? I mean, I've got 175 ga- 77 games or whatever in my Steam collection. All of them are installed, because I made a point of installing them all, and I must have played about, uh, I don't know, maybe 50 of them. I've got, nearly, like, over 100 that I haven't touched yet. And I want to play all them games. I don't want... These days, I don't want to be spending all night, every night in an MMO anymore. You know, mm. I want to play the games that I want to play and I want to enjoy a variety. I don't just want to play one game. That's entirely up to you, but it is an addictive thing as well. It can get addictive, that kind of thing. Yeah. Probably went off on a little tangent then again. Sorry. No, not really. I, it's <laughs> totally, totally relevant to what we were talking about. Uh, yeah, thanks. So. But uh, there's not much more to say without reiterating what we've already said. Yeah. It's, it, 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 it runs against what... It, talking about achievements, funnily enough... Um, we were talking about it earlier. I don't know if that was before we started talking about achievements. Or yeah, anyway, we talked about them. Yeah. Right, cool. So, it, it achievement is a funny thing actually because the achievement is supposed to be your own achievement. Like you're not. I don't need a little thing to pick up on my screen to tell me that I've done something good. If I earn something, it's an interesting feeling that you get from from computer games that other mediums don't give you. And I think paying to beat them it runs against what what their whole appeal is for me. Yeah, even I, in a game that's not very hard, that even if it's a, a, an easy game, you still feel like, oh, I got to the end there. I did, I did that. It wasn't that I bought my way to victory. I don't. There's not a single. It, there's not a single game that I've played that I haven't beat, and I'm thinking specifically Metal Gear Solid Three. I still haven't got past what's his name, Volgan. <laughs> Volgan. I, I, I was, I made a daft mistake, and I haven't went back to it. But CQC him all the way. <laughs> well, that I tried, mate. I was on hard, like uber hard setting, and I just, yeah, I, I had nothing, no health or anything, and I went into the fight. Anyway, beside the point, um, the, the, um, I still don't want to pay to get past that. I, I'm happy mm. that I failed that game, and I, and I, I know I could do it, but. I'm I'm happy I'm in that knowledge. I don't want to pay to get and like if we look at games like Call of Duty where it gets quite competitive and you get quite a lot of people ranting and raving and shouting on those those games in public servers specifically. Um but those some of those people will have paid for a premium subscription or they would have put in you know, a battlefield premium or they would have bought a a, a few weapons or they'd have bought some upgrades to get well, them to a prestige the, quicker or the parents would have paid for it whatever you know and, uh, the, no there are adults that do this as well unfortunately there are adults that play call of duty but, you know it's it's still i've enjoyed a few games of call of duty with friends but it's it's this i still don't want to buy things i buy maps and um, mm. uh, like content packs that are worthwhile. I mean, when I say buy maps, I bought a few multiplayer map packs that have given you like eight or nine maps for a couple of quid. You know, I'm happy there, but that's still DLC. I mean, it, should they have been released when we when we used to play Quake Two, Lou? What was the what was the map scene like? Everybody and their grandma, including myself, were writing uh, maps. Fair enough, yeah. a lot of them were terrible, including mine again. But <laughs> we had a lot, you know, we had a lot of fun making them and and faffing around with it. But you re- you very rarely saw one that was chargeable. 
Yeah, I think that's actually another interesting point is that the new Unreal Tournament 4 is going down that route of getting the community to make the maps. Right. They're basically saying to the community, what can you do for us? You want it, It's your game. You help us make it. And I think that's really, really good. I think that's a nice return to that community spirit that really... There was a golden age of that in PCs where everyone was making maps and mods. And I mean, Counter-Strike was a mod for Half-Life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it um, was. And uh, Team Fortress, the original Team Fortress was on Quake 1, uh, Quake World. But so the these are all is, things that are community-driven. All of these people have all now got jobs in the big AAA studios that used to make these mods. Most of them have. Most of them are, are, are yeah. went down that route. I'm not saying all of them, again, it's generalising, but it. you're right. That there's no sense... Of, oh, there is a sense of community, but it's not the same as it used to be. This is us getting old, isn't it? <laughs> it's a problem. Look at my day! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When I used to play games, they were all made of wood. Yeah. <laughs> Back in my day, you just had to punch a rock. And that was your game. Back when no binary rates. were all zeros. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, yeah, I, I do like that. And I did hear about the new Unreal game. Um, I can't remember the name. Is it Cliff Blazinski? Blizz Blizz Blazinski, yeah, he's left... Uh... No, he's not in charge. No, I thought he'd moved. No, I thought that's what it was. I thought he'd moved to a new team, and then they were doing the new Unreal loss. Or he's doing an old twist, a new twist on an old favorite. I don't think Clippy B's involved with it anymore. I could okay. be wrong. But I don't think he's he he's started up again. He came out of retirement recently, and he started up a new studio. And he said that he's releasing a game that is a a, a fresh take on an old favorite. So it could be an Unreal type game. It could be anything. To be fair, that he's worked on. Yeah, we'll see. It's one of those you have to leave yeah. it till till you know. But I think everyone's on. doing that. I mean, it, in the movie industry, they're doing that. They're rebooting everything from the eighties yeah. and the nineties. It's inevitable that the games are going to do that. All the all the all of the um the casual games are doing that. They're basically mining what was happening in the late seventies and early eighties for ideas for games. Yeah, they can be played really simply on a mobile phone. Manic the same three D. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> um. I don't know where I was going with that. Sorry, I should not have interrupted <laughs> you then. Um, completely lost my train of thought. Uh, You're saying we were we were um, re regurgitating all the old. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what point I was getting to though. I'll I'll leave that one at yeah. that. I'm sure okay. I'll return to that. <laughs> right. Um, I think it's time for another question. I think I'll ask you guys another question if um, oh, you don't God. mind. You've gone all blurry again, Sam. Sorry. You look all right on the stream though. Strangely. Oh. Sorry, guys, if uh, if people are seeing this. Right. Um, so I asked you what your favourite games were. Favourite colour? No, it's a bit rubbish. Blue. No, yellow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we've asked about gaming credentials, so um, we'll leave that one as well. Uh, okay, here we are. Um, what games are you looking forward to? Blue, go. Oh, what am I looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to the Borderlands pre-sequel. Yeah. Um, it's not being made by the original team, but it still, I think, I've kind of exhausted everything from Borderlands 2, and I just want more. Yeah. And we're playing Borderlands 1 now just because we can get another hit of something that we haven't played in a while. But I think, I think they're under a winning strategy with that. Another one made by the people who did do Borderlands is um, Battle... Um, Battleborn, I think it's called. I've heard of that, yeah, yeah. That sounds um, interesting. That's got the most amazing trailer I've ever seen. What, well, better than for the a Dead long Island time, one. yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't seen ball. that. You've not seen the Dead Island trailer? I haven't, no. Oh, just watch it. It's five, you know, five minutes long and it's really quite invo uh, evoking, mm. let's say. It's interesting. But, but the, the interesting thing about Battleborn is that there's currently kind of a fad for um, MOBAs. Mm -hmm. uh, multiplayer online battle arena I think it stands yep. for um, and I've always thought why doesn't anyone do a first person version of that there's no one, everyone does it from kind of third person view they do it like um, basically Warcraft 3 because that's where they, the, the whole genre came from have you played a MOBA in any I detail well, I haven't played any of the specific MOBAs but we played a hell of a lot of um, certain MOBA style maps on Warcraft 3 Ah, right. Well, that's where it came from, isn't it? That's uh, it came it is, from. Yeah, it came from Defense of the Ancients. It actually mm -hmm. came from a StarCraft, start an original StarCraft. I thought it was um, a Warcraft map. Three map that it, it came was from. A, no, it came from before that. It was a StarCraft map. Okay, fair enough. Um, but the, it just it's it, 
that's kind of what Battleborn is doing. It, they're, they're ostensibly saying that it's not a MOBA and that it just uses some MOBA style mechanics, but I still like the idea of, of basically having a massive rumble with a load of AIs running around you as well. Yeah, I've I've got to a point now with with games that are all about shooting things, and I'm talking about like the Borderlands of the world. And the, I mean, we're doing missions and stuff. We're playing we're, as, as Lou's already said. We're playing through Borderlands one at the moment. Um, I played it single player the first time round, and it was a bit interesting. But when you're playing with other people. And you're just running around shooting everything. I'm a bit bored of that these days. There doesn't. I, it's good at it. Don't get me wrong. Borderlands is a brilliant franchise, but I'm just getting a bit bored of the the quick type games. The the games where you go into a room, you shoot. I think they're called corridor shooters normally. Aren't they? You know, you yeah. you um, go into a room, you shoot a load of enemies. You go into the next room, you flip a switch, you shoot a load of enemies. I'm bored of it. I'm mean, that's why I'm not making a shooter game. You know, I'm trying to do something a bit different. <clears throat> I That's love, why you're wrong. I love the first person's perspective, and every time I get a chance, I'm a melee character in games, running around battering things with an axe or a, or a big hammer or something. Yeah. Because I'm sick to death of guns. I, I, it's not, it's nothing moral or anything like that. It's just that I'm sick to death of. I don't. I don't get sometimes when um, you guys want to play those kind of games. I. It, I, it, I know we come from a quake background, but I don't get the appeal of. Shooting an infinite amount of people, amount of enemies that spawn in Serious Sam or in Doom or those kind of games that just don't do much for me anymore. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a simple being. I still get quite a lot of fun from those sort of things. There's um, Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 in recent memory, which are exactly that. You're basically just wading through lots of enemies to die with one hit. Mm. But it's still great fun. It is great fun with friends. I understand that. Yeah. But again, it's it does repeat itself to me when you're. Especially when you've only got a certain amount of arenas or maps or levels to play in, you, you you're just doing the same thing again and again and again and again. Now the the thing I liked about Quake Two when we played that is that it was the the arenas were I don't know you you became quite skillful at the arena that you were playing yeah. in. The, in. the modern games there isn't any of that. It's just you're you're running around on the ground and you have to jump on boxes occasionally, you know. And there's like oh you can get into a sniper position and shoot someone for. Age. It just doesn't feel like well, a challenge. I would say that there's an entire podcast that I'd probably like to cover the whole idea of um, emergent mechanics. Right. Because I think that that's something that a lot of modern games don't have. And I think that's one of the reasons why they're not as engaging for as long a period of time as classic games like Quake and Doom. Oh, but we'll, we'll co- I think we'll cover that in, in yeah, more depth. Uh, well, I think it's we'll, quite a big conversation about that one. Yeah, we are looking for... Um, uh, for subjects and that, so yeah, we'll put that down and we'll uh, maybe talk about it in the future. Yeah, so um, yeah, I said I just feel I just feel a bit lost with the shooters these days. That's where I was trying to get. I don't feel like it it rewards me in, in, enough. That's why I like games like Skyrim. That's why I like games like um, uh, Deus Ex and you know the games that are a bit more involved and require a little bit more thinking. Mm. I don't know. I, I, I can't really say much more than that about them. I think. Yeah, I mean, when I play when I played Skyrim, when I played Deus Ex, um, pretty much any single player game that I've played recently, uh, I've gone down the stealth route. Uh, I naturally gravitate towards a stealthy approach. Yeah. Um, and I really enjoy that. I find that very satisfying. I think I've. It's it's very strange that I've never got into the Metal Gear Solid franchise because that's what it's all about. Um, but. I don't know if it's because it's not first person that it doesn't really strike me as is as immersive as some of the games. But then again, the stealth game that I, that got me into the whole genre was um, Splinter Cell, which is a third person game. So yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I'm missing out. You are with Metal Gear Solid. It's, it's easily better than Splinter Cell, in my personal opinion. I think so too. And the story and the cinematic experience as well is. Is the only cinematic experience that I enjoy these days. The Metal Gears. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. Go on. <laughs> I was just going to say that, that when you're into Metal Gear, it it's easy just to see it as all mint and brilliant. But if you've not, I don't know what other sort of games you've played like this. But you know, there's no denying that Hideo Kojima needs a script editor. Like, t- I love his long cut scenes and I love the depth that they go into. But sometimes they do 
they're very long-winded, and that can be hard to sit through, particularly in Metal Gear Solid 4. Well, he's left to his own devices generally these days, isn't he? It well, he's is... an auteur, really. Yeah. Like he's, which is fine, but it, I'd, I'd just say that um, Splinter Cell, if you're sort of going from stealth and say it from that angle, it's not like that. No. <laughs> there is, it's a stealth gameplay, but you, you can see it. Particularly if you're good at the game, you will watch as many cutscenes as you spend time playing the game. Yeah. Which is something you have to know going in, otherwise it'll get on your nerves. Arguably more in Metal Gear Solid 4. I think uh, most of the game is cutscenes. But that's the thing, that's why I, <laughs> I liked the gameplay so much that it fulfilled my gameplay requirement when I played it. And then the cinematics. Mm -hmm. The cinematics was all fanboy spuff, basically. It's the yeah. same as Ground Zeroes. Ground Zeroes is a two-hour game that everyone's already talked about on the internet. You know, it's it, it costs 30 quid, basically, and it's... a, a Two hours with a load of fanboy stuff in it, and there was a, there was a few missions in it specifically that really made my fanboy hard on get raging. <laughs> it, was, it was some really <laughs> some really cool bits in it, but it's just a teaser for the next game. People's problem with it is that it cost thirty quid, and it's two hours long. I can see that. That's I mean, it's a kind of it's a kind of demo. Wasn't the tanker chapter, the entire tanker chapter included as a free demo with Zone of the Enders? It was, yeah. Which was, so you're thinking that's about the same length, right? I mean, that was a, this is another thing about what but, games are becoming like when that was a free demo a generation ago, well, two generations ago, sorry. A free demo was that tanker chapter, which everyone just came over, basically. And but the I, thing is, there was so much in that. It was two hours, but there was another six hours was of a whole boat additional content, yeah. Yeah. And the same goes for Ground Zeroes. There's there's a whole area that you can do things in and get unlock achievements and see mm. secrets and it's only a small area of the full map, but it's the mechanics are good. There's a few little bugs in it. The the AI is brilliant and you know it's really quite a it's quite a good game, but it doesn't stand up for thirty quid. That's the problem. That is, yeah. that is the the end the start and the end of the argument. And you're right, it yeah. probably should have been a free demo or just less. Just like, just charge like a fifteen quid or a ten or something. Just be like, you know, it's a small yeah. snippet of what you're getting in the full game, which is meant to be massive and glorious and amazing. Yeah. Well, that I think that might actually bring us on to what are your what are you looking forward to, Sam? Did you, well, actually, Lou only said one. Did you want to say any more? Well, you said two. I think I did say two. Yeah, I cheated a bit. Just, <laughs> all right. Uh, no, I wasn't sure if we had a set number. Um, no, no, no. There's a few. I, I could just quickly like. Just some of the things I saw at E3. I mean, I haven't got a Wii U, but I was impressed by the Zelda thing that they saw, um, which was basically looked like Zelda Skyrim type thing. And yeah. the design. Did you not see that E3 demo for Zelda? No, the I didn't new watch Zelda? any E3 content, I'm afraid. Oh well, um, it's worth checking out, especially for anybody that's played Zelda. They sort of show you the high real feel, but it looks like you a sort of Zelda is sort of cell shaded kind of lucky but more like a skyrim type thing where you're like the mountains off in the distance not just like 20 meters away yeah yeah do you know what i mean well, so it's got that, that ocarina of time was at a pretty big field in the middle didn't it it wasn't it's, when you see the demo you'll see what i'm talking about it mate it looks like a world it looks like oblivion you know it looks that kind of that's kind of scale that's not been in zelda before probably. i'm happy with that because i've been happy with almost all of the zelda games they've all been consistently quite good so it, it looks cool you know that's what's great um a PS3, sorry, a PS4 game, which I think is an indie game, and I, I can't imagine how it could be, given how bit ambitious it appears. Called No Man's Sky. It is an indie game, and yes, it is, there's yeah. a very small team, and that's why my my the stuff, I can't wait for the the stuff that they showed in that demo. I, I, if for an indie game, it was like so. They start off on a planet, you walk around, look at some dinosaurs, get in a spaceship, fly out off the planet in one sim seamless thing yeah. through a space battle, and onto another, like an asteroid or a moon or something. And it's like, what? And that, this looks like beyond what AAA gaming's been able to give us. And that it's an indie game? It's because indies are not constrained by budgets and they can they can try things out. The problem is with that game, the only problem I see with it so far, and it looks brilliant, don't get me wrong, it's procedurally generated, but is it going to be interesting? Mm. It's going to be right, beautiful yeah. and it's going to be technologically amazing, but is it going to be interesting? I, I don't know if that's... I mean, that, again, that is quite a big um, topic... I think the cover is yeah. procedural generation versus artistic generation. Um, I agree. I think as amazing as the game looks, I think that wow factor probably won't last long, which is a shame because it does look absolutely stunning. But I felt pretty much the same when I first saw Minecraft. 
yeah. uh, a few years back. Mm. I thought, wow, it, it, <coughs> infinite worlds where I can go exploring. But what you realize is that you're exploring the, basically the same mathematical things, just slightly different. I'm playing Terraria to death at the moment, as you're, you're probably aware. Um, it's a fairly old like 2D Minecraft, basically. That's what it is, Sam, if you've not heard of it. Um, um, and I don't know, I started playing it because I just, I don't know, I fancied something simple. And I'm totally and utterly addicted to it. But I'm getting to the point now where I'm like, right, I haven't completed it. There's loads of bosses and loads of items. There's millions of items left for me to get. But I'm a bored, you know? Have I, have I seen enough of the world? Do I want to generate a new world and try again? I can use the but, same character, but... Yeah, but if you generate a new world again, because it's procedural, it'll basically be like the world that you're already in, just yeah. laid out slightly different. And... I think that's a big problem with procedural games. I think to put enough work into a procedural engine where you would actually get an interesting world would be about equivalent to the amount of work you put into doing it manually. Yeah, but the the beauty of the procedural... No, it'd probably be more, a lot more work you'd need to put in because you'd generate a world, but then you'd, the next time you generate a world or a, a, a new planet or whatever, you it'll be different, entirely different each time. Depending on how much work you put in, as you said that. But again, as you said, this is another topic. It's a. It is a big topic, yeah. It is a, a huge topic, and maybe, yeah, maybe a bit too technical as well for what we're intending here. Mm -hmm. but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how we go with that. Um, but yeah, just quickly, and obviously, Battle Gear Five can't not be <laughs> super excited for that. Don't really need to say anything more about that because I think we've kind of talked about it all quite a lot already. Yeah. We, really? There's not there's not many games that get me excited these days, and Metal Gear Solid Five is one of them. It, it, it does mm. get me excited. I mean, the the as Zelda's do usually as well, because um, I come from that Nintendo <laughs> background, you know. But I don't. I, I, you look like you've got an opinion on <laughs> Zelda, Lou. I've never played any Zelda games. No, uh, I, I, I'm not. I, I'm not a Nintendo person at all oh, i've enough. never understood a, the, the nintendo fanboy thing i think I, I get annoyed actually when you see a lot of american content on on youtube and stuff where it, it seems like americans only think that the nintendo exists they don't know about any other and i bet they think it's an american console as well <laughs> yeah yeah it's just it seems so ingrained in their 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 childhoods and so ingrained in their the, the kind of gaming experience that it's like the only thing that exists is Nintendo and then a few other people doing games. Yeah. And it annoys me because because there is a lot more to games than Nintendo. A hell of a lot more. I mean, Nintendo is yeah. very dumbed down in general as games, but the Zelda games themselves, they do offer a lot, I think, in terms of even the Mario games, some of the Mario games, they do offer a lot. And again, I've talked to Sam a lot about Mario and I know you're your opinion of Mario isn't the of the highest, is it? Well, it's not that I don't like Mario. Like I, I just haven't had the same experience of playing them, and I haven't played like I haven't properly played Super Mario Brothers three or Mario sixty four, which are the ones that everyone holds up really highly. Or Super Mario World, or Super Mario. Yeah, in not, fact, two really. one of my favorites on the NES. I've it's... had a I've had a bash at Mario, and it it seems like a good game. I think if I had had a Nintendo or a Super Nintendo as a kid, I would have probably tamed them and been a fan. The it's thing... just a case of how much time you get to spend. And I also do find his "It's a me, a bad it Like I, yeah, yeah. I hate that shit. I, that I, cool. I understand that, and this it's also quite racist as well and stereotypical. But <laughs> just a um, bit. but the 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 way that I can summarise Nintendo and fanboy. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a fanboy. I do like some Nintendo games, and I. I've, in fact, I very, very much like a lot of Nintendo games, but I'm not a fanboy about it. Um, the way I can I can put them is that Nintendo innovate. They they basically they come up with a lot of ideas. They come up with the first Rumble Pack, for example. They come yep. up with like this Wii motion control thing. I know the gimmicks a lot of the time, but a lot of them, and, I, and I'm sure there's a lot more examples than that. Um, a lot of them stick and become like commonplace in the game industry. They don't do it the best. Other people let's, do it better than them. Let's be thankful that the three-handed controller didn't stick here. Huh? Yeah, that wasn't <laughs> the best decision they ever made. I occasionally pick it up when I, I've got a few downstairs and an N64, and I, you know, it's like my it's, hands are like that. It's, it's just a controller yeah. with a cock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I never ever used the left, the the other angle because you can Nobody hold it in did. three different. No, no one ever did. Anyway, right. So, um, any what any other games you're looking forward to, Sam? Uh, oh, there's one little one which is, um, it's a game by Platinum actually, and it's only a, a small four-hour downloadable game. 
Now, I was talking to you about this a while ago, Chris, about the the Avatar franchise, and by that I mean the cartoon, not the James yeah, Cameron yeah. film. The sequel series to the original series is called The Legend of Korra, which is currently on TV now. Um, there's a there's a game coming out of it, so it's a platinum game where you get to basically it's like beat 'em up, 3D beat 'em up with a sort of anime style appearance, and you use the four classical elements as your fighting style. So you fight with water, earth, air, and fire, and just with the stuff that I've seen, it's it's they've only had a short development time for it, but they only had a short development time for Rising, and that turned out really good. Yeah. So it's only a, like it's only meant to be about four hours, but it's the kind of game you're supposed to play through multiple times and do different things each time. Right. That's a that's a DLC. It's like a downloadable thing, you know, like a Walking Dead type thing. It's not a full price game. That's the next one. That's the only one this year, I think. Yeah. That's left to come out this year that I'm, I'm up for. I don't that's honestly. I honestly don't have that many that I'm looking forward to. I'm. Uh, I've I've got a lot in my Steam collection that I'm looking forward to playing. Um, mm. but I mean, Metal Gear obviously can't can't not have that on the list. Um. No Man's Sky was definitely on my list as well. Uh, I am interested in it as a developer rather than is it going to be fun? Because I don't, I don't, I unless they do something with it or, or give us a bit more information, I don't think it's going to be particularly interesting. You know, I think it's going to look brilliant, and I don't know. I don't even know what kind of game it is. I'll be honest. I don't know if it's an exploration or it's a it is, yeah. fighting it's, game or it's it's kind of the it's taken on the survival mantle. Um, of a lot of the games like Minecraft, where it's basically explore and kill stuff occasionally. Right. Um, okay. Obviously, the new Zelda game as well. With me being a Zelda fan, I, I do want to play it. Um, but apart from that, I don't. I don't really have many, so I can't really add much to this. You guys have beaten me to it. <laughs> um, right. We've got. I'd say we've got about twenty minutes left uh, before we we finish the stream. Um, okay. Any other games that you want to talk about before I pick something randomly out of the list? Um, oh. Go on, Sam. Oh, there was a subject that I think we you'd put in the um, the stuff that we were going to talk about that we've not really t- we have touched on it and it's kind of tied to DLC. But you were talking and it's the pre-alpha stuff, but pre-ordering games in general, the pre-order packages as well. Or did you want to save that for another time? Um, no, we can talk about that. Yeah, because um, uh... I don't know about you but i've had particularly with assassin's creed 3 i had a bit of a bad experience with pre-ordering a game that i felt like that... i shouldn't have pre-ordered that one yeah um i also pre-ordered the assassin's creed 3 um like extend, the big box the, the bundle edition with yeah uh, i didn't get a, a i didn't get a figure or anything but i got a really shit belt buckle yeah, I in, got a, in, a, in a, pa- a pouch and somewhere else. I can't remember what it was. Just I, I haven't looked at it since. There was one um, pre-order that I did, uh, which was Batman Arkham City. Is it Arkham City? Was that the... You're probably all right with that one. And that, I had a figurine with it, and a, it's a really good figurine as well. And there's a, there's a few booklets. There's additional digital stuff as well. My problem with, um, with pre-orders... Is uh, again, I'm, I might be taking this from one of the other podcasts that I've seen, but it is, or I'm, I'm repeating similar stuff anyway. The, the fact that if you, if we didn't pre-order, then the AAA developers wouldn't get away with such shoddy stuff, because the game would come out, it would get reviewed, and then the savvy people would read the reviews and go, actually, no. I this time round, and I'm so glad that I did it. I haven't bought Watch Dogs. I was going to pre-order that. I don't think anyone has. um, (laughs) And that's the thing. I I decided not to because I was like, I'll give it a go because I've got loads of other games. I don't need to play it now. It's not a really exciting one for me, but I did want to play it. And I still haven't played it now. I'm going to wait until it's a few quid to buy it because I'm not going to... I'm not going (laughs) to... Until it appears in a humble bundle or something. Yeah, 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 something like that. (laughs) Because the company's folded. Um, But that's the problem. It's... If you keep buying... If we keep pre-ordering and we keep... Um, buying DLC and and going for the pre-alphas and all these new trendy things that are happening in in the game industry, then the problem is is the quality of games is going to lower or it's not going to grow as quickly as it could because the developers have already been paid for the work that they should be doing and they don't put as much effort in. Like, look at the Assassin's Creed 3. Assassin's Creed naturally has lots and lots and lots of fans. It's a it's an interesting franchise. I do like it. I'm a fan of the franchise, I'll be honest. I know Lou is definitely not a fan of the franchise. Yeah. Um, the first game, 
yeah, it was interesting. The parkour was really cool, but the, the <laughs> gameplay was shit. Let's be honest. Um, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and and um, what was the other one? Revelations. They were probably the best ones, I think, out of all of them uh, so far. That's although, interesting. although four, I have been really enjoying. But that is also suffering from the humongous open world, too many things to do, too many collectibles, and I've. I've got bored of it. I'm stuck in the middle of an ocean somewhere, and I stopped playing it about I don't mm. know three or four months ago. It was I played it for a little bit when it came out when I got the PS4, um, and I'm bored. It's not that it's not that I don't think it's a good game. It's just there's too much to do and there's too many other games to play. So that's kind of my feeling on on that whole pre-order deal. So it, it's all kind of in the same catchment for me. It is. We just didn't really talk about pre-ordering in particular, but I just thought it was worth. I think we've. We've all got similar views around this area, so I thought it was worth bringing up. Anyway, well, the, thing, the thing here Does, again is is the it's the call to action. It is the again, eight viewers doesn't matter. Everybody needs to get on the same boat and and stand against this kind of stuff because, and I'm not I'm not going to sit here waving flags and stuff and do protests. But <laughs> at the end of the day, our money is what makes the game industry. Mm-hmm. Even though we are individuals, now I'm one of these people who who says. Who might come across with things like, um, in other respects, I might come across, say, for example, um, voting might not matter to me, for example, but spending money is my voting. If you know what I mean, it's my it's my way to say I enjoy this game, I want more of this, or I approve of this game. You know, and it, it, I, to me, that's if people didn't. Like frivolous, frivolously spend money on games before they're ready to play them, and I'm guilty of this as well. Everyone's guilty. Every gamer, I think, is guilty of this. Um, I'm kind of losing my train of thought here. I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of going off on one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I just think it's, it's, it. There's something. It's something strange about paying for a product that, before you've got the product. I mean, you don't. I mean, within reason, you don't really do that with other things. You don't. I mean, you can like buy like a DVD before it's released, but the odds are you've seen that at the cinema already. You know, like, you're not going to buy, I don't know, the Avengers 7 DVD, probably pre-order it without having first seen it at the cinema. You don't you don't go to the shop and pre-order a banana, do you know what I mean? You just go and buy <laughs> the product that's there and yeah. you expect a certain level of quality from it as you purchase it, or, or not, as the case may be, but you inform yourself about that and then... Again, the pre-ordering after I've pre-ordered Assassin's Creed Three and played it, and I started out really liking it, yep, and then same. disliked it more and more. The more bugs and the more annoying chase missions I had to do, and I was like, I paid fifty quid for this, yeah. and, I, and I could have just not, I could have just not. No, you know what I mean? I'm totally with you there, and so it's I just yeah, I'm t- I agree with the whole sort of I don't do it on principle now, not because there might not be a game that I, I might be say if it's a sequel to a game that. Well, like, Assassin's Creed 3 was a sequel to a game that I had no reason to believe wouldn't be good. Hmm. So I had no reason not to think it was going to be good. So, yeah. I, I mean, don't, don't get do me it wrong, it wasn't, it wasn't crap, but it didn't do anything to me. It didn't, I mean, it was yeah, loads it, of bugs, but it didn't, it didn't improve it for the genre. There was, tr- you could run around in trees. Amazing. Right. Wow. You know, you can now go up slopes. That was one of the fucking selling go points. You can go up <laughs> slopes. They should have had that with big letters, like no. Or was go it fight? Up slopes. Either either go up slopes or flat <laughs> fight on slopes. There was something like that. You can now free run on slopes. Wow, wow. amazing, amazing. That's the future, right? There. I, look, I can, again, I can understand the um, the the technical implementations and the uh, uh, and how there are challenges surrounding them. But as a triple A with hundreds of hundreds of people that are working for you. You it's know, good, don't even get it, me started on female characters it, and things like that. With and go on. Oh, that was all <laughs> bullshit, the, wasn't it? The, it was. the, 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 just the sound of that, that, that promoting the, the idea that you can go up slope sounds like those games which used to say, and now in colour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eight colours. It's now Technicolor. Yeah, yeah. You can't remember that. <laughs> <sighs> Thirty-six colours. Like, okay. So I was, I was actually going to ask another question, which you've just pretty much answered, Sam, which was, um, uh, what games have been a disappointment to you recently? Definitely, uh, definitely yeah, Assassin's that, Creed. That, that was a big. <laughs> it's not that recent. Um, do you know what I'm going to say? In a weird way, um, and it wasn't. A, it was a really, really good game, but slightly disappointing was Dark Souls Two, because it it didn't have the same director as Demon Souls and the original Dark Souls, and it just it 
it had a lot of improvements in it, but it sort of lost. A, a, it's hard to describe what it, it lost a lot of the feel that was there, that did the atmosphere and things. Some of it was amazing, and it. But at the same time, I came away thinking, ah, I kind of, I kind of expected and wanted a bit more from this. Yeah. Um, the first Dark Souls in particular was like, even if you don't want to play the game in particular, just look up stuff to do with the game and about the world that they built I've got and how it. Every, everything interconnects in that world. It's it's quite ingenious in a way, the way that they put that world together. There are some bits of it that are like, right, that doesn't fit here where you put it geographically. That doesn't make sense. But generally, everything, you can tell where you are. You, get, you come back to a place through shortcuts and you go, oh, I'm back here. And it's like, that's I've amazing. That. Whereas... Go on. Yeah, I've I've heard that that's um, that's one of the big things that a lot of people talk about in um, Dark Souls is that you you can be walking around and you can see something in the distance and you actually end up going there. Yes. Yeah. That sounds cool. I've got it. I've got it in the Steam sale, and um, a, I can't wait to play it. But I haven't. It's a cracking game. I haven't built myself up to it because I know it's going to be hard. I know it's going to be a it's, difficult game. It's ruthless and rage inducing. Like I spend most of my time playing Dark Souls in a fit of rage, but <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Wanted to carry on. I'm just like, I hate you, but I love you. Like, yeah, just... I, I can't get, I can't get over that that particular hurdle in the game. I played Dark Souls one and two, and the control system feels like it's just out to kill me. Is it because um, it was it in the pad bit... though? It's, it was just, uh, I died five times trying to, to jump over a chasm in a training mission, and I thought that's that's too many times to die in a training mission. Mm. I shouldn't even be dying in a training mission. I should be able to just jump over. Uh, something on the floor which says jump over me i don't want to uh it, it just and it took so long to reload and it to set do, up it didn't have that it, it i'll do a, I'll, I'll do a stream and you can watch me play it how about that uh, uh, yeah. i suppose we, should, we could both do a stream and you could watch genocide happen as both of us die a trillion <laughs> can time you, can you do multiplayer is it it is multiplayer isn't it it is it's yeah so in a weird interesting way yes right so are you it or shall i you go I have heard, I've read, I've read reviews. I kind of roughly know what it's like, but go on. You Lou. go. Go on, Lou. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was just going to say, I've noticed in your list that you put Castlevania, and um, to all intents and purposes, um, Dark Souls is a, a Metroidvania, isn't it? It's a 3D yeah. Metroidvania, um, and I never really got into Castlevania either. So you can start to see, <laughs> start to see a pattern in the sort of things that I go for, and. Mindless shooty and face games. Well, not really, because I like stealth games. But... And, and you do like RTS games as well. And... But, but what 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 didn't the reason I didn't get into Dark Souls wasn't because of the genre. It was because of the just simply because of the controls. The controls just felt evil. It's like this game is hard because I can't control it. That is my exact reason That's for disliking and continuously avoiding Resident Evil Four because I hate <laughs> the controls. I really, I mean, Sam is a big fan. I know it's, I a, it's the controls in that game are awesome. The controls did my tits in. I just I can't I can't deal with that that view, and I can't deal with the restrictions in character movement. I know that's part of the genre, and I know that's intended. Mm. Um, the, the the Resident Evil games, the original one, two, and three, I think was the, the there was a third one, wasn't there before that? There was. There's there's been a lot, mate. The, the, the was. Three, I'm talking there's about three. four for fuck's sake. <laughs> I think you mean the three that were on the PlayStation One. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's what yeah, I meant. That that, that era of yeah. Um, I I enjoyed those, but I didn't enjoy them to the point where I played them more than once, or or really kind of got. I, I played them and I pushed myself through them all. You know, um, I, I do I do really kind of want to finish for because my wife is very keen on zombie games in general, and I know it's not really a zombie game though, is it? That's the thing that one. We started. Like we started playing it. We played about three hours of it, and I just said to her, "I can't. I can't deal with this control system. Sorry." So now we're playing Dead Island instead, and and I know lots of people have criticisms for Dead Island. Um, a lot of people don't like it, but I tell you what, we're really enjoying it together because it's quite easy going. It's not really high stress zombie f fighter, you know. I find that one of the most enigmatic games ever. I've never seen any footage of the game being played. I've seen about three or four different. I don't know how many games there are in the series, but. I don't know what There's the game one. is. So far. Well, okay. Well, you know what it is? You know what it is? I can tell you exactly what it is. It's Far Cry uh, 2 uh, on an island with zombies. Right, I hated Far Cry 2. Uh, it's it not Far Cry 3, but Far Cry 2. The mechanic good. and also the tone of the game. The tone of the game is very uh, misogynistic, I'll be honest with you. 
Every, all of the girls are in bikini. I know it's on an island and it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of like in the middle of the ha- Hawaii or whatever. But um, it, all the girls are in bikinis. One of the missions you have to... It's just go and collect a mission then go and do stuff and fetch things for people. But I like the mechanics in it. There's, um, For example, one of the missions is uh, you have to load a car up with fuel from a petrol station and while you're, you're getting the fuel, zombies are attacking you. And then a big zombie comes out and attacks you and then you have to get away without blowing up basically and i quite liked it it's quite good and um but one of the other missions is you go into a hut and there's a girl there who is blatantly in her 20s you know she's early 20s like mid 20s or whatever and i can tell this obviously even though she's blatantly how how are you blatantly in your 20s she's got a sign saying i have 23 (laughs) (laughs) okay right whatever she's over 16 that'll do and okay. the mission is you have to go and get my teddy bear for me, and I'm I'm and, and like all of the girls in the game are like that. None of them are they're all bimbos, you know. And it's it's, it's just, offensive. I'll be honest with you. Is there an option just to punch you in the face? And no, not- that's one of the things you can't stab people. Uh, you can craft weapons you as can't well. Stab them. I like it, and it, for a, for what it is, it's I I think it's quite well done. Um, the mechanics themselves. There's a few bugs in it. The AI I quite like. The zombie AI is really good. It's quite interesting, but I, I can see why people don't like it. It's not the best of its type, but in terms of a game that me and my wife want to play because my wife's into zombies and I'm into games, it works for me, you know? Chris, can you please write a review for that on Amazon or something saying just simply, I can't stab people? I can't stab. <laughs> well, you can't stab. Because I would share like, that everywhere on the internet. I am going to raise a point right now, and I don't care how much trouble it gets me into we are playing about- games right we're playing it might be about what you're thinking i'm not sure <laughs> we play games yeah and games are uh, historically they're always in the news for being violent and uh, issues you know issues surrounding them and this this kid's gone and killed an entire school full of other kids because he's been playing gta or whatever you know all of that kind of stuff one of the problems i have with with and, and maybe this makes me a bit sick i don't know why can't I kill children? Oh, I knew you were going to say that. Why I agree can't totally. I kill children in Skyrim? Because they are still there, and I understand the connotations. Can you not kill sur- them? No. no. If, you you hit ki- them. if you hit them, they run off, and you can hit them as hard as you want with any weapon, and nothing happens. They don't even bleed. Um, all of the guards come and kill you. Right now, there that's is a fine. mod for it, though, right? Uh, yeah, and there's also mod for naked models and. Model many penises mods for that. and stuff. Oh, yeah. Not of the children, I would hope. Um, I, oh. I didn't look for that, Let's I'll be honest. And I, I think that's very unlikely, but I haven't looked for that. <laughs> I, think, I think killing them's bad enough. I know. No, it, it's, enough. I understand why, right? I'm not I'm not saying... I, I, I think the problem I have is the people that get on the soapbox about it. It's the, the fact that games are escapism. Games are not the things that, that make people do these horrible things. It's, no, I agree. It's their prior existing conditions that do it and games might exacerbate but so do films and so does having a conversation you know, trigger points and things like that I, having a conversation with people sometimes does it i don't even think that they exacerbate i don't i don't think that they do anything other than if someone if someone is sick enough to kill someone and they happen to have seen some method of doing it then they might do that but i don't think it actually encourages them to do that i think it's just it's just something in the mind that they can do. It's it's they've been shown a way to do it. Yeah, but some people argue that, that that triggers it, and then that kind of makes them turn. But these people are always going to do this anyway well, at some point. He, he's he's an interesting fact for you. Um, in Japan, there is there's quite a lot of um, there's there's quite a lot of content out there that is ge- geared towards um, sexual assault. Yes, should we say? Way too and much. yet and yet Tentacles. in Japan in Japan it's got one of the lowest um, lowest instances of sexual assault crime of any country. Yeah. That's an interesting fact for you. But, I mean, like it's cathartic, you mean? You yeah, think? I think it is. I think to be able to go and kill... Like, if you're pissed off and you go and kill some zombies or even some other people on a game, then maybe it would actually stop you doing something stupid for real. I, I don't think it works the other way around. I don't think that a game... Th- playing a game and you suddenly think, right, I want to go and chop someone's head off with a chainsaw. But I certainly think that being able to, to vent your frustration on the game or to, to act something out so that you don't have to do it for real is actually beneficial psychologically. It'd you be might have a point have there. Opinion. I mean, I, I'm quite, I think I'm quite a level-headed person, I'll be honest. I don't come across like a, 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 like a 
like, I, I want to kill people in life. You yeah. know, everyone except gets frustrated. You, except that you know that you can't stab children. It, it's not. It's not the fact that I want to stab game. children in the game. It isn't that. I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd be digging a massive hole for myself if I said that, wouldn't I? I mean, it's ridiculous. The, the, you, that's what your game is basically: kids stabbing the game. <laughs> 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 stopping the game stealth <laughs> stealth version uh, no so that, you, want the, you want the prime dlc pre-alpha pack for that yeah. one <laughs> i'll be yeah, i'll be pre-ordering and, and upgrading my pc ready um no um it's it's the it's it's the crap that surrounds it it's all the politics but i have problems with politics and bureaucracy and everything like that anyway in general I just think it's all superfluous bollocks and everyone just needs to get on with themselves, you know, get on with work or whatever they're doing in that particular situation. But it's it's just taking freedom away. It's like, if I want to go and bloody kill all the children in the town, you know what I'd do? You know what I'd do in Skyrim, right? If I could kill the children, I'd have tried it that one time that I tried it and I'd never have done it again. It again. Yeah. I'd never <laughs> have touched it again because it's it's detrimental to, to the, the game, the how I want to play the game. Have, it's, um, sorry, Lou, have you played... Uh, Skyrim or any of the well, Skyrim yeah. had one kid in it. So yeah. did you try and did you try and kill them? Because I did. I can't remember. Um, Just out of curiosity. I mean, I did. No, I, I did, but I didn't attack anyone in the town. I think I've got this ingrained. Um, I don't want to hit anyone in a town because when I used to play EverQuest, if you even accidentally like touched a vendor, yeah, then all yeah. the guards would descend on you and destroy you. Yeah. So, but, so I, that's that kind of the RPG style. Don't touch the guards. Don't touch anyone in a town who isn't isn't read to you i have that in my head as well generally yeah. but it was one of those save it try and kill yeah. him and then reload it regardless that's i do that occasionally within in those kind of games to see if i can do things Saves just, out of, just out of interest you know the the kid thing it's not i un, again i understand the issues surrounding putting children in that kind of light i don't know but it's just a game it is, but it's also, it's a game that's built around around the, the the sense of freedom. Yeah, like Skyrim in particular is like right. Here's here's Skyrim, the the country essentially, or the region, whatever you want to call it. You can just go and make. You know, there's a story, but it's like you go and make your own entertainment in that game. You make it for yourself. You do the things that like you get these people that just chop logs and then like build things out of the log or like do this random stuff or. Lay armor down and make pictures out of armor on the ground, you know, like yeah. that's what they find fun. It's that's and well, however, not, if you found killing children fun, then that's the problem. But you probably wouldn't, you probably it's, it's, wouldn't be playing Skyrim though if you were that kind of person. If you want to be like a bit, if you want to, it, it doesn't break immersion, but it does, it breaks the feel of the game a little bit. It, you can't do it. And I'm not saying again, like you, you I sort of went, I would sort of. You test the boundaries of the game, don't you? And go, oh, what can I do here? So yeah, like you, I would have saved it, chinned one of them, and then <laughs> like, reloaded. But it didn't work. You know, you just they just run away. And go, ah! It, it sort of felt like I should be able to do this, even if it I shouldn't be doing this. Do you know what I mean? Like I should be able to be the bad guy if I feel like I want. That's what I want to do. Today. I mean, I, 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 I agree with the repercussions. Like when you hit a child in the game. All the guards descend on you from the yeah. entire town, and, the, and and yes, do that anyway. But allow me to make the option to escape or not, you know, one way or the other, because it's, it's just it, a game, and this is not a real child, you know. At the end of the day, I'm not living out any fantasies. It's just freedom in the game. Do you think this should be an achievement? What <laughs> achievement unlocked? Chin the child. <laughs> the child. <laughs> Killed um, six I, kids in a row. <laughs> I, I think. I think. Bad. I, I kind. I I do agree, but I think. From a purely pragmatic approach, the developers did this because they knew that it would get them in a shit. No, no, no. I think they're forced to do it by the um, they are, FC- yeah. not the FCC, the ESRB, and you know mm-hmm. the, the bodies that CCBBC. Maybe, 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 maybe if they, maybe if they made it so you could kill children, it automatically got an R rating or something like that, and then no one would have been able to buy. It. I mean, I remember Duke Nukem was eighteen rated. Yeah. And Skyrim's, it's, Skyrim's an 18, isn't it? Probably. Is it? Oh, yeah, I, think, I think my copy of the game... Uh, you're killing humans in the game, I, Lou. I think, so, yeah, but there's no swearing and no nudity. It's, yeah, but you're killing ass. humans. I think yeah. I'd rather be swore at or someone jiggle the boobs at me, uh, you know, rather than... <laughs> well, your head yeah. Yeah, rather it, than die. <laughs> this, this, is, I mean, this is an interesting kind of topic in itself, not really about games, but I think the, someone quoted... I can't remember who it was. I think it's actually George R. R. Martin who did um, Game of Thrones, but he said... Um, people are horrified 
when a, a, a penis enters a vagina, but not when an axe enters a head. It's true. In my books. And it's like... I'm kind of the other way around. I prefer to see the first one than the second one. Yeah, but it, you're, I think what you were saying is that... It's, it's a reaction people get in, it. Yeah, people get up in arms about it. So this is inappropriate. You can't show this on television. You can't let children watch this. Like... But I was allowed to watch, just for example, I think I watched, you know, things like Terminator and that when I was a kid. And that's got people getting shot in the face or whatever, and that's fine. But if I'd been shown Barbarella. hardcore porn at that age, not I know whatever, not even really hardcore porn, but, you know, it's... face kissing <laughs> to some, some shite like that, that would have been seen as like, how could you possibly? But it's like, yeah, well, it, that's, surely that's... isn't sex slightly less damaging to observe than... <laughs> People getting shot in the face. Like, well, the thing is, I know is, it's not real. Neither of it's real if it's a fictional See, we're, story. we're going a bit off topic here. We're talking about real rife. We're not really here to talk about the yeah. the it's, yeah. it's the repercussions of games. You know, we can we can again. They're told they're, they're topics to in their in their own right. But mm. I think when it comes to games themselves, it's the freedom and it's the experience of the game that is more important to me than anything else. I don't really care. I mean, I'm fighting aliens in most of these games, or I'm I'm ripping people's spines out in in Mortal Kombat. You know, it's they're just games. They're not making me feel any any. They're not making me a worse person. I don't think. I don't. I don't think they've affected my view of life. You know, I mean, they've enhanced my life because I've enjoyed playing them. I think they desensitise you to things and uh, allow you to in, to enjoy more artistic I endeavor. Dis- I disagree. I think it depends on the person because I can't watch a horror film. I I cannot watch a horror film without having nightmares and I'm 32. I am <laughs> ridiculous with it. I-, I watched The Blair Witch Project and couldn't sleep for two weeks and that's not even got any violence in it. A- a- anything like that I just don't get along with. Right. But, but games I'm fine with. I don't go I, be- I said I've been playing Dead Island. I think some of the some of the you know, death so you can chop bodies up for God's sake in it. And I sit there just going, oh, this is fun. You know, chopping limbs off because it's a game. And I just, I've separated myself from it. But if I saw it in real, I mean, I saw um, some of the other week on, uh, and it was, uh, it was like 10 or 11 o'clock at night and it was open heart surgery on this guy. And I, I looked up from my laptop and looked up at it and I, I had, I had a panic attack because I don't, I, well, I don't know. I just had a panic attack because I saw this guy with his heart ripped open and people mm. doing surgery on it. And it just made me think, Jesus, maybe my, my body was like, that's real, you know? That is actually real. That That is upsetting and shocking. But It is a subject for another time, but um, the, that desensitisation thing um, it is interesting. I saw um, a video, I think, by Jim Inquisition on The Escapist about this very thing. And he said there's a... Di- there's, there's a the uncanny valley sort of switch in your brain knows when it's real and knows when it isn't. Mm. And he, he said, look, I'm going to play you a bit of footage of this. Um, and I probably should remember the guy's name. It's a, it's a, a politician in America who actually goes on stage. He, he was in trouble for something. And he goes on stage on TV and shot himself in the face. Like he pulled a gun and, it, and he said, I'm going to show you the clip. If you want to watch it, you can. If you don't, you don't. And it, you see real things like that it is different it's not mm. the same yeah. in a game or a film it's all it's all shot with cool angles of lighting and it's all that other stuff that you you, you know it's not real and you can you find with it you can watch the most violent film or whatever and you, it's okay but you see it in real life it is disturbing like i don't think it, i wasn't desensitized to that at all it was awful yeah yeah I, th- I think when I meant when I talked about desensitization, I mean desensitized to the things that happen in the game because there are, there are people who'd watch that if you showed you know the vicar um, playing through uh, Wolfenstein and people's arms and legs and heads coming off. He'd probably be horrified about that. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, well, this we, is what I mean. Everyone's different. At the end of the day, you can't really generalize. But I think it. it I think what gets me is the sensationalization of things, uh, and the, I said the politics surrounding it, and the the amount of discussion that goes on around it, and it, it applies to every single controversial subject. My advice to everybody, and not many people will like this, is lighten up. You know, <laughs> chill out. It's not. It's not real. It's a computer game. You know, it's for people's entertainment, and and it's it's not making us crazy people. It's not making us unreasonable. Or I, again, this has been done by people who can say it better than me many times before. You know, so I'll shut up now. Anyway, <laughs> <sighs> right. Um, I think it's probably better we uh, best we end the the uh, podcast now it's been two hours yep 
Um, okay. Thanks for everybody who has remained listening. I know there's not been much chat in the chat room, but uh, hopefully there have been people watching, and this will be uploaded to YouTube anyway. Um, Again, I will say once more, if anybody else out there has an idea for the name for the show, we're going to try and do this every week. Um, you know, see it depending on who you know who's available, etc. But we'll see how it goes, and uh, we'll try and try and keep it up. Hopefully, we'll have a lot more opinions for everybody. Um, so thanks to Lou, thanks to Sam, and we'll be uh, we'll be uh, hopefully here next uh, Wednesday. Quick pimp in before we go. I'll let let Lou do his pimping. I know we did it right at the beginning, but um, um, yeah, I'm working on a game at the moment called Archeos, which is a a remake of a very old game called Chaos Battle of the Wizards. Um, it's been in development hell since about 2009. Um, but I am working on it still. Uh, and hopefully, you should be able to see more of that very soon. Cool. Um. I'm personally working on uh, a game called Subnet. It's a hacking, stealth, and parkour, but like first-person game, influenced very heavily by the likes of Deus Ex, Metal Gear Solid, and um, Mirror's Edge. Uh, it's very ambitious. I have a team of people helping me out with it. Uh, we're all doing it in our part time, so it's not a you know we haven't got a deadline for it or anything like that. But uh, that is basically where I am up to. I also do a show called MMO Buff on Thursdays, which is what our our next show's tomorrow. Uh, we have guests on from the games industry. We have uh, people from places where we've potentially got people from high high places coming on the show, but we've had people from all walks of life, from helping with um, indie tax breaks to to other game developers pimping the game to people talking about workflows and how you how you get into game development and giving you advice and things like that. And it's a bit of a therapeutic session for uh, for for us indies. Um, so yeah, I'm there. I, I I don't believe Sam's got much to pimp. I'll be honest, but we'll. Uh, <laughs> I'll just himself. Just, just me. A... I, my own awesomeness. Yeah, but I don't really need to. That's obviously apparent. So yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, thanks everyone for watching, and we'll um, we'll see you next week, hopefully. And uh, cheers for for being there. See you later. Ta-ra.